Welcome all to the June 2nd Wilkentown Board meeting. I'd like to start this off with a public hearing on Saratoga Prime Properties zoning change. Anybody want to speak about it? Would you like us to make a quick presentation? Sure. Good evening, everyone. For the record, John Lapper with Frank Perillo on behalf of this company, Saratoga Prime Properties. Um, quickly, Frank owns an 80 acre parcel on Ballard Road just across the North Way at exit 16, um, which is zoned C3. And the parcel that we're here to talk about tonight is currently zoned residential, and we're asking it to be uh, rezoned to match the adjacent parcel which runs on Ballard Road. Frank is not planning on developing it, but he's hoping to sell it. And um, we look at this as an opportunity for the town and exit 16 for hopefully another large employer to do a quality project here. So um, that, that's really the sum and substance and we're here to answer your questions. Anybody in the crowd have any questions for John? We've got Stephanie Ferdino. Steph Ferdino. I don't have questions. I have a presentation. For this? <laughs> for for this? Yeah. Oh, okay. So good evening, Stephanie Ferdino, on behalf of B and D Properties, and owner of an adjacent 44-acre parcel that has a proposed 19 lot subdivision that has been before your planning board for the last year. The pending application appears to seek a zone change from uh, the restrictive R2 zone to your most, one of your um, least restrictive zones, C3. I say appears to because I haven't been able to find any documents on your website and the town doesn't seem to have any documents about this. And that makes it difficult. I'm four hours into this project. My client just called me this afternoon because he received the notice. So my client reached out to the town planner, who curiously didn't bring his, this to his attention during any of the planning board's review of this subdivision, despite them working on it for the last year. And Ryan's response is, there are no plans. It's just a zone change. And that seems odd to me. The applicant's attorney's response was similar. We have no plans because the applicant will sell the property, not develop it. And I totally get that. I love Frank Perillo. He's a wonderful person. I've been his neighbor and he's known me most of his life. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how you pick C2 zone if you have no idea what you're doing. Like, why not pick the Hamlet zone or industrial zone or C1 or R4? How do you figure out what you're doing if you're not exactly sure what you're going to use the property for? I, I mean, that's kind of the beginning of the process. It also strikes me as odd that the Gazette seems to know more about the property than the town does, because on May 10th, they had an article that Skinnell Properties, known for its building distribution centers and warehouses, is looking to develop 137 acres at exit 16 and I am horrible at math but I added up those two properties and I got to the 137 so I'm guessing that that's where this project is. We get that the owner is probably under an NDA or that the proposed buyer hasn't really told them and that's okay but the proposed buyer needs to be part of this process and the town is allowed to ask questions even if the owner of the property is not. In fact, the town law requires that, the state law requires that. Before you vote on the pending application, you have to consider it under something called Seeker. I'm guessing you're all familiar with that. We're assuming this is a type one action, but without an application, it's really hard to tell. So I'm guessing that they're going to be altering at least 10 of the 137 acres, and if they are, that's tripping them into the type two action. Type two action requires a long form. It requires studies. It requires evaluation of impacts. Has coordinated review been initiated? I haven't seen anything, and we've been looking for things, but you know, I'm four hours in, and it just strikes me that there are some pieces missing at this point. We're also a little concerned that something called segmentation is being done. Segmentation is the di division of the environmental <coughs> review into different parts, and then you only consider the impacts of those parts. 
But here, at a minimum, I was trained by the great Matt Jones, <laughs> at a minimum, you've got a zone change, you've got a lot line or a merger of the two parcels, you've got site plan review. This isn't a situation where you can just kind of look at the environmental impacts of shifting to C1 and not kind of look beyond that as to what to, they're doing with the property. And if you're questioning whether segmentation is here or not, you just have to look at the Seeker Handbook. At page 53, it's got a series of questions, and if you answer yes to any of them, then it's likely segmentation. And so some of the questions that I highlighted that I thought would be of interest, is there a common purpose or goal for each segment? Is there a common geographic location? Is it under the same ownership or control? Is segment segmentation and identifiable component of the review. We haven't even gotten into the impacts to B&D properties in this residential subdivision that's been pending before your town, because it's hard to tell what the impacts are if we have no idea what they're doing. If they're gonna put a single family house there, right on, we are for the zone change. If they're gonna do something bigger than that, we may have some concerns and we would like to be able to at least see documents in order to have a meaningful public hearing. So we would ask you to keep this public hearing open, make whatever documents available to all of us so that we can review those and then have us back so we can comment on the impacts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If I can respond to that before somebody else goes on. Um, so of course there's an application. I don't know why Stephanie didn't find it, but we were here last month with the application. Mm -hmm. um, it's C3 rather than C1 that we're asking for the zone change. And the reason for that is because, as I mentioned when I started, the adjacent parcel, which Frank already owns, is C3. So this is just to make them compatible. It's not spot zoning because it's just extending the district um, one more parcel. And again, Frank's goal at his age is to sell some of his holdings. So he's looking to sell this property. He's not looking to develop it. We do have this property under contract, but it's on in due diligence, and we have no idea whether this buyer is going to close on it. Um, I mentioned at the last meeting that Frank had a year ago, he had it under contract with another developer, and they didn't, whatever tenant they were looking for, they didn't get it, so they didn't exercise it. They, they let it pass, and you know, that could happen here as well. So um, it's not segmentation because Frank's not building anything, and we have no idea. We're just looking to sell it. If we think it's more saleable if both of these parcels are in the same zone, it seems appropriate for the town, again, that it's C3 because it's right near the Northway interchange. And, traffic can enter on the county road, on, on Ballard Road, and in terms of impacts on the neighborhood, which is the seeker review, and of course you understand that. Um, Councilman O'Connor and the board last time we discussed the 150 foot no cut buffer, which is a larger buffer than is required in any zone in Wilton, um, along the residential and E.D. Road, and um, you know, I understand that you, know, you also want to make sure that there's no truck traffic from E.D. Road, and that's you know, agreeable to Frank as well. We're just trying to have it rezoned so it's all under the same zone so that somebody, whether it's the guys that have it under contract now or somebody else buys it, and they will have a plan. And when they do that, they'll have to come before the town. And obviously, you've got to look at secret impacts for the rezoning, and that includes the buffer and protecting the neighbors. So I think we've got it covered. It's not segmentation. And Frank has no plans, and we have no idea what this or any other purchaser might want to build because they're not sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Ingalls. Yes, hi, good evening. How are you? I'm Dave Ingalls. Uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself to the town board. Um, I'm the member of the Indian Properties, the owner of the subdivision being proposed across the street on the west side of Edie Road. Uh, B&D Properties owns approximately 44 acres on the west side, which would be immediately across the street from the southerly portion of this uh, property being proposed for the C3 zone change. Uh, up until last Wednesday or Thursday when I received the uh, notice, the public hearing notice, uh, we, had, we had not heard anything from the town. Uh, or through any of our deliberations with the planning board relative to a proposed project or I guess generally the proposed zone change to the C3 across the street. Uh, obviously that would be devastating to a residential project that we're working on. Uh, 
probably wouldn't be very compatible to have a trucking terminal or warehousing and distribution uh, with all of the tra traffic. Um, so again, that would be devastating not only to our project, but the residential neighbors. Uh, when we did our due diligence and looked at purchasing the property, uh, we looked at the town zoning, which was R2, which was compatible with what we were looking for, residential subdivision. And likewise, the town's master plan, our comprehensive plan also states that this area would be residential in nature. So that's what we uh, purchased on, based on, and that's what we proposed, or that's why we proposed the subdivision we're working on, the residential project. Uh, we've been at it for about a year with the planning board. Uh, so we're, we're looking to hopefully bring that to a positive conclusion with the planning board and obviously this would not be something we would be in a fa in favor of and we would recommend denial of the proposed zone change and we think it should remain the R2 that it's shown currently. Uh, again some of the main concerns that we would have would be similar to the items that we had to look at for our simple residential project. Uh, traffic, noise, odors, visual impacts, threatened endangered species, wetlands, water, sewer, have any of those studies been completed to date? Uh, I, I haven't found any, anything uh, in terms of my request to, to Ryan. Basically, he responded that it was a zone change and that there were no plans. So again, we would be interested in what the plans really are. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this? I'm Ray Minkowski. I live down the road a bit from there. Um, I basically got three concerns. Um, one is traffic on Dollar Road. There's three to four hours a day where it's bumper to bumper from about a mile west of the interstate to almost <coughs> to Route 50, so people going home and so forth, back and forth to work. So if we make a change that's gonna potentially increase the traffic, um, you're gonna make it four lanes, you're gonna put in a bunch of stoplights, you know, what are you gonna do? Um, the second thing I'm wondering about is my daughter's on the fire department, and the bigger, the big industrial developments seem to drive an inordinate number of false alarms. And so they spend a lot of time running over, nope, nothing doing, go back. And there have been times when they haven't been able to attend to real instances because they've been going to false alarms. You're gonna make more of those. Um, and then the last one is kind of what the other folks have already said is, I don't wanna buy a pig and a poke. You know, if you walk in the door and say, I'm gonna do, take this property and I'm gonna do X, Y, Z with it, you know, we can have a good discussion. But to just rezone it with no idea of what may happen, no, I, just, I can't see that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Somebody wanna make a motion to close public hearing? I thought it was just on this topic. Okay. Paul Kelly, 27 Pablo Hill Drive. I just wanted to say thank you to the town staff and board members. We had an issue uh, that may, may, not, may or may not be resolved at this point regarding a I'm sorry, Paul. Is this about the rezoning? No, that's what I was. Oh, asking. okay. We have to close that public hearing. Oh, okay. this is yeah. a one. All right. Public comment. You can well, get your next budget. <laughs> I'll make. Uh, unless there's no other comments by uh, folks in the audience about the rezoning change, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. second. Do we have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass. <coughs> We have another public hearing, local law number two of 2022, amend the open meeting law. And something just from up from the state, I guess, the governor. Anybody want to speak? 
Are you aware of this thing, Ryan? I'm a no, I believe I'm a Mr. Schachter's aware of the open meeting law. I think I said I didn't. I said I said a proposal for law and resolution today. Yes, you did just okay. so. Yeah, <coughs> you just give them a little a little bit of what just it a little is. background. Yeah, it's um the the open meetings law traditionally required or historically required live attendance by all members of a public body, sort of to certain very <coughs> far-fetched exceptions, including things like you could attend remotely as long as the public was able to attend physically where you were remotely. Ridiculous. So nobody ever did that, and rightly so. Um, when the pandemic came, the open meetings law was, um, the exceptions were uh, afforded to, the, to us all by governor's uh, emergency orders. As we all know, we were able to have meetings at which no one had to show up live, and in fact, no one at the beginning was supposed to show up live. The legislature a month or so ago, roughly maybe a little more, not much more, um, adopted amendments to the open meetings law to allow remote or virtual participation by less than a majority of the public body. So in other words, starting next month, all public bodies have to have a majority physically present at the live meeting here at Town Hall, if it's a town meeting or wherever, if it's some other type of meeting. But less than a majority of the members can continue to participate virtually or remotely if you adopt a local law providing their, their ability to do that. I uh, believe we, that's what we talked about last month, is setting the public hearing. I think the public hearing is now. And we also sent a proposed local law that would adopt that. You do have to create a policy. First of all, you, have to, you actually have to make two decisions if you decide to go forward this. One is whether you, which public bodies of the town of Wilton you want to afford this flexibility to. Most towns that are going forward on this basis are putting it right across the board, any public body in the town. It seems logical. And you also have to decide at some point, not necessarily tonight, you have to adopt a policy that describes under what circumstances the remote or virtual attendance can occur. <coughs> That's the gist of it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Somebody want to make a motion to... I'll make a motion we close the public uh, hearing on um, open meeting law. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Close, Gary. The three public, hand, public hearing on transfer of uh, development rights. Do you want to speak? Charlie Pickett. Charlie Pickett. Charlie Pickett. Live at uh, Seven Pine Ledge Terrace. Been there for quite a few years in town for almost 50 years now. And I guess I'd just like to say I support this concept. I think it will help the town to maintain open spaces, which will be good now and will be good many generations down the road. Once the property gets developed, uh, it's pretty much gone. It's pretty hard to go back from development to open territory. And I know I spend a number of my months in the winter in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida now. And one of the things they did 100 plus years ago was maintain a lot of open space and it certainly is nice now with uh, the incredible development that's going on and trying to split existing lot sizes in half to put in more houses and stuff like that the open space is great so this helps go for it thank, thank you. you thank you thank you sir anybody else like to speak <laughs> Belmonte of Belmonte Builders. Just to try to explain a little bit more what Charlie was hitting on here, anybody that this is new to. The concept is that we, that developers in the town would identify parcels of land that were interested in the town to preserve. The, the developer would have the ability to acquire that parcel of land and if it was capable of building a certain number of homes, using for an example 10 homes, they could relocate the right to build those homes onto another parcel of land that wasn't adjacent and take the parcel of land that the 10 original homes came from and dedicate that to the town. There are some very key parcels of land in town that the, ta that the town has a very high interest in preserving. It may be adjacent to a parcel that they already own. It may be a quarter that they're trying to create uh, passive recreation or they're trying to create walking paths this gives the town the ability to acquire that land without any expense to the town 
pass the expense on to a developer, and in return, the developer is able to relocate the development that would have happened on that parcel of land onto a parcel of land that they may own somewhere else in the town. It's a phenomenal idea. It's well recognized in the New York State uh, subdivision laws, and it's practiced by many municipalities in the Capital District. So it is something that we've had the opportunity to participate in before. It worked very successfully, and uh, we'd like to see Wilton adopt the same procedures. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Our attorney. <laughs> Sir. I don't think I'm a member of the public, but I wanted to suggest to the town board is that if you further consider this, I have uh, four proposed revisions to the draft of the two transfer development um, uh, section of the zoning, and I can tell you that right now or prior to a motion, whichever you like. Well, it's going to be brought up again, so okay. I'll do it then. Okay. Okay. Can we want to motion, make a motion to close this public hearing on this matter? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to start our regular monthly meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take the roll call, Julie. Supervisor Leon. Yeah. Deputy Supervisor McEachran. Here. Councilman Bogardas. Here. Councilwoman Culligan. Here. Councilman O'Connor. Here. Thank you. Anybody like to speak in okay. public comment? We've got Ray of Rolling Green Drive. That was my mistake. I signed up for the line. Oh, God. And we have William Harborn of Timbera. Already answered. Already answered. Uh, Frank Perilla, are you on here too? No. All right. Let's see. Todd Harvey. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, yes, my name is Todd Harvey. I live at 107 Cobble Hill. And just by chance this afternoon, I heard that they are proposing to put in several apartments. Um, up at the mall and I do not believe that our town needs any more apartments going in especially up at the mall where it's already very busy traffic wise uh, we have a new development going in right off Jones Road uh, apartments is not something that the town of Wilton anything that we need um, I've spoken in the last hour to several of my neighbors they had no clue that any of this was going on uh, they wish that they could come up here uh, one of the things a lot of the things that happen here in town of Wilton in these board meetings uh, the residents have no clue we don't know what's going on I was told oh well it's in the paper well who reads paper anymore uh, one of the things, you know, like I said, I caught wind of this, dropped what I was doing and came up here. Um, you know, I know for a fact that if all my neighbors in my development of McGregor found out and knew that this was a proposal, there'd be a line out the door. You know, there's got to be a better way to allow us to know what's going on with these board meetings i mean we all pay taxes we fill in our paperwork we mail it you know ask us for our email addresses send us an email and say hey we have this proposal coming up these you know apartments up at the mall um and, and you would have more people responding rather than us being left in the dark you know we had no clue that there was a roundabout going on jones road you start driving down the road and says oh there's going to be construction next thing you know oh my god there's a roundabout Talked to a lot of my neighbors, no one knew what was going on. You know, so I, I just would like the board to maybe look into going down the road, you know, allowing us or giving us some type of heads up. Um, one, like I said, I spoke to many of my neighbors, it was last minute, they would have came up here if they could, kids, sports, they just can't, but I know that uh, there's many people opposed to, you know, the mall being, you know, putting in apartments that we just do not need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
uh, Rich Pollock. Hi, my name is <coughs> my name is Rich Pollock, and I live at 17 Carlisle Terrace. I had uh, two two items. One is a follow up from the last town board meeting. Unfortunately, I was unable to make the planning board meeting. I was out in Idaho visiting my son, so I don't know if there was any provisions made for an open for public comment at those meetings or not that's what i had asked for and i i'm just curious if that's if there's anything new i thought the lawyer explained it to you yeah i was going to say i thought he i thought our attorney explained that last month well I, no I, I responded about what typically does or does right. not occur at planning board meetings at towns throughout the state he, if i understand the gentleman's question he's asking whether the planning board had an open public comment period at a recent meeting and the answer is no we did not Okay, and, well that that's one, but I I guess I I thought the, I guess yeah. I guess that was my fault. I will get on it tomorrow morning. Okay, so there is there might be a good day. Okay, yes, sir. okay. The other comment, which again it may sound a little obscure, and I, I don't want to take up much much time here. That is, you guys are involved in checking on it on solutions that are being proposed what the cost impacts are especially if there's going to be any local costs so let me just make a quick observation as some of you know i'm a retired engineer so i'm kind of a, a rational um, thinker and the one of the big problems that's that with the country has faced recently is the mass shootings so i hear and everybody hears solutions that are being proposed everybody hears what the pro problems are let me just make one just a, maybe two or three comments or observations and, and the reason i think it's important here is because ultimately the solution to the problem will have local costs and if we look at those potential solutions and say hmm is that the best that you know the most bang for the buck then that's a good thing that if you look at a solution you say oh my gosh that's going to have a major impact on local costs then maybe it's not such a good thing so just a, a couple of observations everybody hears about you know what causes the mass shootings well I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it but ultimately from my point of view it's when lots of bullets go through people quickly that's what kills people it's lots of bullets hitting lots of people kills lots of people if you have fewer bullets and fewer people you don't have as much you know, mass carnage so that's the the real problem it's those lots of bullets so that's one of the problems so just come in please yeah. um, the the second thing is okay so if there are solutions to 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 lots of bullets killing lots of people then you know what some of the solutions have been automatically shot right down and and not even considered but i look at it and i say let's look at what the cost impact are of potential solutions so if you look at it and you say well golly one solution might be well one one, one of the problems people say is oh it's a mental health issue okay well my grandfather was an md in world war one he was a psychiatrist and i heard his stories as, as a young child there were mental health issues a hundred years ago mental health is not the new problem it may be contributing to it but it's not the new problem that we're facing mental health has been an issue for a long long time and as an engineer you look at you, you look at a problem and say gee what has changed well one of the things that's changed is a hundred years ago or no longer than that when the constitution was written and when the amendments were written there we didn't have um, huge guns that could spray bullets like that 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 didn't even that, you know the, the framers of the constitution weren't even thinking about that so when they were writing that their candles and stuff like that they weren't thinking about that as the problem so history has changed so now we're at a new historical period and we have to look at that and say hmm that's part of the problem that's something that has changed so let's look at it and say you know when my grandfather was a, a, a psychiatrist 
he was worried about patients getting loose and grabbing a pair of scissors or a knife and getting through the locked door and getting to the doctor or to his family and hurting them. But now it's it's a different situation. I, I'm going to pull the plug right now. But you get the gist of it. I think the problem has not been properly identified. And until we look at it and say, gosh, there's going to be some local cost impacts here, depending on what ultimately is done. If we can look at that and, and talk to some of the other legislators further up the food chain, you know, we're, we're going to be down the road saying, oh, gosh, look at that. Now it's another mandate, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. Thank you. Can I, can I finish with my comment? I know it's probably not the right spot, but Memorial Day weekend, we lost 41 kids to gun violence. 41 deaths on Memorial Day weekend, and not one with an assault rifle. So, I mean, I agree in s some parts of your, your statement, but there's, there's we gotta look at the whole picture, and not just one picture. And I only heard one picture of that comment. Three minutes. <laughs> Robert Burns. Good evening, my name is Robert Burns. I've been living up here since uh, 09. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, and then um, things changed there, and we moved to Staten Island. Staten Island is the country of New York City. <laughs> um, there was plenty of open land, there was Bounce Scout Camp, there was a lot of things to do. Great, great place to grow up, okay? and then. Um, the bridge was built and um, things got overdeveloped. Pretty much what happened. And it kind of destroyed the borough in a lot of senses, okay? Um, but they do, they have an Amazon plant out there now. They do have an Amazon warehouse there. So, but I've been up here since 09. And um, when I came up here, I said to myself, this is heaven on earth. I love the outdoors, I love the animals. I love doing things on the water. I love doing things in the winter time. I like to hunt. Um, I've been well educated in gun safety. Um, and you need to do that before you even get a hunt license. Um, and I think that basically, uh, I look at it as kind of more like a population control thing where when you get too many people in one area and it's not just, not just mental mental things that can happen with you know when you get such a mix of people but it's also we we have to provide for that we have to provide for the infrastructure of a housing unit being put in uh whether you know multi multi units and we have something already going on at jones road and i'm just wondering when the dam is going to burst when when our taxes are going to be raised so high somebody has to pay for this and if you have people that don't own the property and they come in and they're going to live there somebody's picking up the tab for this okay whether it's uh, water uh, you know taking care of sewage roads traffic okay um i just i, I like wilton the way it is now and and i've seen changes in wilton already in my time up here and i'm not even up here that long and i'm not in favor of all of it but you know what are you going to do this is what happens you know there's a lot of land north of us too there's other interchanges um there's there's uh, you know i'm sure there's people that would uh you know but why do we why do we have to we we have a uh we have an area down there around 15 that is 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 just congested on any day of the week and forget about the holidays and the weekends i don't i don't go down there on a weekend because i know what i'm gonna have to deal with so i just uh i'm kind of like i have my i have my heaven on earth i live at 34 Clement road and I, I love it i'm bordered by state land um on two sides and i couldn't ask for more but I, i'd like to see things uh remain pretty much where we are today uh, i mean there's always progress has to be made progress 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 but sometimes progress isn't the best thing to do you know and we don't know what we're inviting so that's that's my feelings on that and, uh, 
That's it. I, I'm not going to get into the gun safety thing. Because, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave McConkey. <clears throat> Yeah, my name's Dave McConkey. I built my house in 1987 up on Corinth Mountain Road. And back then, I would go up on the mountain as a hunt. And all I see was fields where the state trooper barracks is. Now I see Ace Hardware with um, air conditioning units. But I see in the traffic by storage, you sit there for 20 minutes to get out at the light. I think just this town's going overboard. And it's going to be another toilet or Albany. Thanks, Dave. I use them all by the way. Joe Moran. Oh, boy. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Joe Moran. Uh, just to dovetail with Bob's, I like to keep Wilton Wilton. I heard about the apartments maybe being put in for the uh, moments. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea if there were co-ops or condos and they have a vest vested interest in the real estate. Uh, it would be their property, but I realize doing 20 years in NYPD, I have several PhDs in life and urban studies, and I put those de degrees and experiences against any academic degree. So I've lived in, I lived in low-income housing, and that invites housing urban development, Section 8, and uh, amongst so many other problems and issues. I lived next door to a Section 8 tenant, nothing but a nightmare. It's when uh, Mario Como was emptying out Will Willowbrook, and he was trying to place the psychologically impaired and mentally challenged people within the living populace within New York City and other areas within New York. I mean, it sounds good on paper, but when you're living next to somebody who has psychological issues and brings in prostitutes, crackheads, and everything else, and actually got caught burglarizing other people's apartments, we couldn't even get them evicted. I mean, it just brings a nightmare. And it also brings in people who will be on parole, people who will be in place, uh, child molesters, pedophiles, you know, people commit sexual assault that come into these apartment buildings, you don't even know about it. So it's really not going to improve the quality of life in Wilton. It's really going to uh, have an adverse effect on the quality of life in Wilton. Uh, I've seen firsthand, I lived in New York City, lived in Long Island. I've seen the way uh, New York City went, I've seen the way Long Island went, it became overpopulated. And, uh, just reduced and diminished the quality of life of the people who live there. And also, again, with the Section 8, you have people that are, you know, mentally impaired, mentally challenged, and uh, they can create, you know, an assortment of problems. And in regards with the mental issues, you know, there, there are more kids psychologically impaired and men have mental problems today than ever before, years ago. There's more mental problems in children than ever before. <coughs> so that's the difference between like mental problems with them years ago and as, as today. But uh, again, with regards to the apartments, I don't think it's a great idea. I think, you know, if they're going to be sold as real estate and condos or co-ops, that's not a bad idea. But uh, we're becoming overpopulated, all right? I don't think we have the resources to accommodate large influxes of people into the area. I moved here about 15 years ago. I never wanted to change Wilton. I loved Wilton the way it was. I wanted to keep Wilton Wilton. You know, it was beautiful. You know, coming from Long Island to here, you know what, it's just, I love this area. It's fantastic. It's clean, great quality of life. The schools are great, the people are great. And I'm very grateful that I'm here. I'm very, very grateful for, you know, for the board and everybody. People accepted us here with open arms, very warm and gracious people. And uh, yeah, I like to keep Wilton up, and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Harold Woodworth. I'm Harold Woodworth, and I'm member of the street in Saratoga, and I just found out about this Wilton being changed into 300 apartments or so, and I really think we could find a different use for that property. Like he said, it kind of over taxing our resources, fire department, and like that. We don't need it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's not signed up? Did you
you want to let Mr. Kelly speak at this oh, point? You want to talk about it? I'm so sorry. Oh, that's right. He was on the other one. <laughs> he was on the other one. Sorry, I was, I was late. I had what could best be described as a kinetic event with a metal pipe up to my chin before I got it. <laughs> so I tried not to bleed out a microphone. I just want to say thanks to the board. I submitted some materials in regards to an issue uh, last month, and I felt that it was reviewed and um, Whatever the outcome was, I do appreciate the time that the board took to review the materials. Thank you very much. I know it's pretty much a thankless job most of the time to be up here. Um, and then I wanted to also comment on the Wilden Mall issue. Last month, I think I, I think I mentioned something about asking what the price point was because my initial, my initial reservation on that was, as some people said whether this was going to be low income or not. And I've reviewed the materials and I've looked at some of the other uh, things that the developer's done. And it seems that I've been swayed a little bit towards that. I've heard about um, apartments in Wilton and I know there's apartments what used to be Stan's Flea Market. <laughs> you know where that is. Yeah, yeah. And also on the Wilton Gansford Road. And there's going to be apartments and for people to live. The mall, which which was built, I remember when it was built, has always been kind of like a ghost town. It's been, been at the end of the mall, the mall craze, and I don't know. I think I, I think I felt like this might be a good uh, a good chance to look at something to put maybe the transfer of development rights into moving what would be apartments somewhere else in Wilton to where the mall is, um, having practice law in Florida for a long time. Uh, a lot of the malls like Saratoga in downtown have, you know, kept condos on the second and third floors and, and, red, and mixed use uh, everywhere else. And I'm just thinking that might be might be worth taking a look at. But thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> So, I'm up here again, didn't think I was going to have anything to say about this one, but um, as I've mentioned before, my daughter's on the fire department, some of her friends are on the fire department, they're desperately looking for a way to stay in Wilton so they can continue to be on the fire department, and finding apartments in town, especially ones that are within the distance to the fire stations, there's one. And so we desperately need more rental housing. And if you think about the traffic that the rental properties would bring in versus the traffic if we had Bonton and so forth, you know, they're 3,500 a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of them or just the luxury? All of them, from what I read. I'm pretty sure, right? That's I, what I don't know. Huh? <laughs> That, that's still cheaper than an oh. not being able to find anything. I mean, <clears throat> so, we need some more housing somehow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anybody else like to speak? My name is Dave Harmon, uh, in reference to the uh, proposed apartments and townhouses. I can tell you this, I bought a piece of property on Broadway in 2002. The growth in Saratoga since 2002 has been extreme. I also have a mall in the store, and I'm probably one of their oldest tenants. The mall, the mall needs help. The property is there. You lost Bonton, you lost Sears. I can understand where this gentleman's coming from because I have friends that live out where he does. The bottom line is times have changed. If we don't step up to the plate and be proactive, 
what's going to happen to that property out there? It's already there. You don't have traffic from Bonton. You don't have traffic from Sears. You have a lot of empty stores. It's not going to create more traffic. Um, it's going to be a source of income for Wilton. I happen to live in Saratoga, but it's there's a lot of pluses. Nothing is going to be 100% a plus. There's going to be negatives too. But when you look at the positives and you look at the negatives, the positives are going to outweigh the negatives. I've seen it in Saratoga. Is everything that's happened here good? No. But there's more positives than negatives. And I think it would be beneficial for not only Wilton, but the people here, as the one person said, where's the money going to come from? There's no housing. So if they don't put housing there, they're going to build it somewhere else. So you got a captive audience. I just read some of the information. It's a hundred million dollar project. A hundred million dollars. Somebody picked Wilton Mall to spend a hundred million dollars. Who's going to take advantage of it? Well, the other people, I understand 100%. Is everybody going to welcome it with open arms? Absolutely not. But there's more positives than negatives. And that's coming from a businessman, and I've seen it in Saratoga. So. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. May I say one more thing? Yeah. <clears throat> so, having four boys all in sports, uh, one of the things that I've always proposed, not proposed as Wilton or anything, but to neighbors, other parents, is yes, malls are going out, you know, losing businesses left and right, they're becoming ghost towns. I have traveled up and down the East Coast, you know, year round with my kids for sports everywhere, Philadelphia, New York, Jersey, Vermont. One of the things that I'm seeing that I always thought would, would be a fantastic idea for Will and Mall, where you would literally have businesses and restaurants begging to go into the mall, was you take a large portion like Bonton, let let somebody come in, put in a hockey rink, indoor lacrosse, indoor you know soccer, you know these these sports. You know, I, I drop my kid off at hockey practice for an hour, and what am I doing? Sitting in the parking lot, you know? Instead, I can go over and go grocery shopping, you know, I can get a bite to eat, this and that. You're going to, if, if there's other options for the mall, you have all that parking, all that space, you can build up indoor sports, all sports as we know as we grew up, you played in the spring, then it was done. Not anymore. Yeah. We're starting the hockey season in July now. We're traveling all over the East Coast. The same thing is happening with lacrosse, soccer. You know, you you see these businesses popping up all over. There's one on Route 9, you know, where people are coming in and saying, hey, you know, we can teach your kid to be better at this sport and this sport. The mall has so many other opportunities besides apartments that will thrive. You, like I said, you will have businesses begging to go in there because, you know, you drop your kid off. What are we going to do for an hour? You know, you're going to have tournaments in there. You know, it's going to bring, you know, money into the town. People are going to be staying overnight. Hotels, tournaments, things like that. That's what I've always thought would be a fantastic idea for the mall was, you know, putting in some sports centers there. That's it. Thank you. Palisades Mall north of uh, New York City has a lot of that. Yes. Anybody else like to speak? Yes, sir. Scott Kingsley, 105 Traver Road. Um, in regards to the proposed apartments 
at the Wilton Mall. Uh, I am against it. Um, I believe, you know, our master plan says that that is a commercial corridor and to just arbitrarily drop, you know, 300 units of apartments in there, increasing this town's population uh, anywhere from 300 to 1,000 people overnight. Um, I think that's a, that's a big step for this town of only 17,000 people to take. Um, I think at a minimum before we do that, we need to revisit our master plan and see if that's something that, you know, that this community wants to do. Um, we do that anytime there's a zoning change. And a planned unit development district is a zoning change. And I think it should have the same weight of, you know, as if they were just changing that from commercial to residential. Because that's what it is. Okay, I also worry that if you do this for this property, what happens if Lowe's goes out of business and you've got an empty big box? What happens if Home Depot goes out of business and you've got an empty big box? Do we give them apartments? Do we give Lowe's property apartments? In that, you know, you run a slippery slope is, is you're gonna have, and I'm not against apartments, I live in one, okay? But I don't want a situation where the people who don't have a vested interest in this community, and I'm a native of the town of Wilton. My family's been here since 1972, okay? Yes, I know that still makes me a newbie, but that's, that's for another day. Okay. I don't want a situation where people who are using this just to commute and don't have a vested interest in this community, deciding what the services and the property taxes are going to be for the single residential homeowners in this town. That's my concern, and that's why I'm against this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Way in the back. Come on right up here. Good evening. My name is How are John Corbin. I live in Rome. Um, I wanted to speak against this plan. Um, I think I agree with the gentleman that um, this town sh board should take a step back and look at that whole mall. If you want to make it residential or residential with some light retail, that's a major uh, restructuring of the mall. I think that this plan is just attaching a barnacle to the mall. It will either kill the mall or those the housing won't be successful. Either way, I think it's uh, a harmful plan. I think that um, the town should take a step back, take a look at this. There's probably, as the other gentleman said, there's a lot of things that can be done with the mall. But you need to decide, is this going to be residence with some light retail, or is it going to be a mall? And make that decision as part of a master plan. Look, not just the next year, but look, five, 10, 15 years in the future. So, All right, thank you. Is there anyone else out in the other room want to speak? Got a couple of letters. Yes, you want to read them? Got a couple of letters. Um, this is to the town board. A uh, resident wrote to John, I apologize that we can't make the town meeting tonight, but we wanted to give our thoughts on the proposed development at the present Wilton Mall. Uh, Janet and I are against the plan to develop a large residential building at this site. We travel loud and road frequently, and this just doesn't look like it belongs there to us. Uh, there are other areas in the town where a project like this would be better fit for the community. Best regards, Jeff and Janet Hurt. And we have one more. Hi, I have lived in Wilton for close to 30 years. It is a great community to be part of, and I appreciate how hard the town works to keep it that way. I am writing because it has been brought to my attention that there is a developer who is looking to build 400 apartments at the site of the Wilton Mall. I am not opposed to growth and development. I am opposed to growth and development when there is a little, when there is little added benefit for the residents. I feel that our town has added more than enough apartments for residents to move here and become a part of the community. If they like the area, they can make Wilton a permanent home. We do, however, need affordable senior housing and over 55 communities, so some of our aging residents can stay in the town where they raise their families. We also need housing for first-time home buyers, as most homes are out of their price range. Additionally, we should be looking at permanent housing so residents can stay and become vested in the community. 
if the developer would like to ask our town to build any of the aforementioned, I would welcome that. I respectfully request that you vote no on this project. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Lenny Fornabia. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Everybody get a chance to read the uh, May minutes of the meeting? And I'd like to make a motion and we approve the May minutes. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Sort of the prime properties. John? Also um, agree to limit the uses um, on, on the property, and, and that's fine. I'm looking for retail, and um, he doesn't want to have a heating fuel station. Um, so you know, whatever the board is comfortable as part of the secret review, you know, we're looking at manufacturing, assembly, um, distribution, uh, special offices, and those all seem like that would be good for the town for employment. Um, Mark Schachner, I have a question for you. Um, I spent a good chunk of the last two days on the phone with, uh, talked to Mr. Lapper earlier today, Mr. Perillo a couple of times this week, um, a representative of the prospective buyer um, who has an option on the property right now. Um, and at last month's town board meeting, for those who were here, I expressed, you know, my concerns and reservations uh, rather emphatically, I think, about uh, my concerns about uh, the rezoning. Um, and just one point, I'd ask for a 200-foot buffer, not for 150, but I'll spot you that 50 for right now. Um, if... Um, if the town board, you know, were to continue to entertain a change in zoning uh, from R2 to C3, does, uh, can the town board, or what process would the town board have to go through to narrow and limit the uses within C3. So, for example, while I might be, you know, open to business offices or manufacturing, but not fast food restaurants, bars, auto repair businesses, and, you know, that extensively long list of other uses allowed in C3, uh, can we um, specifically exclude those uses in uh, in making a zoning change? So the short answer is that's not how a legislative body would ordinarily act in amending zoning. Mm -hmm. um, there are other vehicles that can be pursued if you're trying, if an applicant is trying to pursue um, less broad array of uses that is potentially allowed in the zone. Mm -hmm. But I have to, I have to also comment on something you just said, Councilman O'Connor, which raised an alarm bell in my mind. And the alarm bell I raised in my mind was I thought that we were operating on the assumption that we haven't the faintest idea who might purchase the property. Ha hang on, yeah. and to what you said, I put it. If you spoke with the would-be tenant, which is what you just said, then I'm thinking we do have some idea of who might be purchasing the property. And I'm wondering if that also means we might have some idea of to what use the property might be put. And the reason I'm asking these questions or raising these issues is because although Ms. Ferradino made a pretty significant, from my narrow secret, review standpoint error in something she said that I think she misspoke about, which I'll ask in a minute if she wants to correct what she said. It's a very minor, esoteric, secret legalese point. Yep. But the, her general pitch is that, I'm going to paraphrase, my words, not hers, and we have not discussed this, she and I, nor any of the other attorneys and I, but her general pitch is that, in my words, the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act encourages a lead agency, which is what you are right now, to look at potential environmental impacts of whatever might be proposed and whatever might be happening in the context of whatever might be proposed. Mm -hmm. If an applicant, regardless of whether it's a property owner or a would-be property owner, if an applicant hasn't the foggiest notion to what use the property might be put, then there is some limited support for the notion that the secret review can take place and not look at the ultimate use of the property, because nobody truly knows if that's the case. And there's not a magic way, by the way, to put up or shut up here. Sure. Some of this is who you trust and who you don't trust. 
Um, but if if we have a reasonable a reasonable idea or a reasonable anticipation of the use to which the property might be put, then one of the principles of CEQA review is the CEQA review should occur or should should uh, entail review of the maximum build out of that potential use. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the fundamental principles of CEQA review. And to that extent, the comments by Ms. Verdino are largely accurate in terms of what the CEQA law mandates. Just so the record's clearer than I think it is right now, yeah. nobody but myself and possibly Ms. Verdino might care about this, but when she said that her view of the thresholds would suggest that this becomes a secret type two action, mm -hmm. I'm almost 100% certain that what she meant was a secret type one action. Uh, because a secret type two action would be an action that is not subject to secret review at all. Yeah. She probably just misspoke, but I just want to say, in, in my opinion for the record, there's no possibility whatsoever that her proposed action is a secret type two action, which is what she urged. That's an esoteric point. The more important part of what I said is the first part of what I said. Yes. So going back to the first part of it. I definitely misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> so getting to the first part of what you said. This is within the last 24 hours. So, um, uh, mm -hmm. it, so a representative of the company that has the property under option, uh, which is Scanal, <coughs> which is uh, a Midwest company that does uh, large projects all over the country, from literally from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they told me they don't have a specific plan for anything. They knew what they didn't want to do, and there are a series of uses allowed in the C3 zone that they said they have no interest in, um, and that there were perhaps, you know, maximum a handful of uses that they may want to put the property to. So, um, uh, but again, I got that from a representative of the company, not from the company itself. Uh, the gentleman who I tried to get verification from was traveling, and uh, he was not able to uh, get back to me. So, my um, what was my question? So my question. <laughs> I you so, so this particular person, and and again, in my conversation I had with Mr. Perillo um, as well that there are a number of allowable uses in the three, C3 zone that neither party, neither the uh, prospective buyer who has the property under option or the seller has any interest in. So um, in what fashion could you possibly rezone and make sure that all of those uses, and, and most of them are uses that I and I think people in a residential area would have objection to. How do you successfully exclude those and allow certain other uses in the C3 zone to stand? And then of course we get to the other issue which is the you know buffering so issue. So from my perspective, I think we're making this way, 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 way more complicated than it should be in a better secret review world. Mm -hmm. In a better secret review world, based on the information that you've gleaned in the last 24 hours, Councilman O'Connor, by far, by far, the neatest, cleanest, most legal way to proceed would be for the applicant or somebody connected to either the property owner or the would-be purchaser, doesn't matter who, to submit some sort of plan that either is a rough sketch plan for a specific project or a maximum build-out plan under the under whatever uses they want to contemplate. Mm -hmm. And then have the board conduct CEQA review based either on a rough a rough sketch plan of what's proposed, <coughs> if, there, if, it gets to, if it's that far along, or the maximum build-out possible. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how lead agencies treat CEQA review issues all the time throughout the state when there's something that's on not physically on the table yet, but it's more than just a gleam in the eye, if that makes sense. Sure. That's by far, from a legal perspective, the neatest, cleanest way to do it. Okay. So we can't do that because um, the company that has under option is looking for a tenant, and you know, it could be a whole different, you know, all sorts of kinds of uses, manufacturing, mm -hmm. warehouse distribution, offices, they're looking for a tenant just like the last perspective purchaser was. Frank is, you know, trying to not pick a fight, and if it matters to the board that some commercial uses like fast food is not something that you guys are excited about, you know, he's not building anything, so he's willing to give that up because, you know, for a parcel this size, it doesn't matter if you have an out parcel or an acre. Um, but 
he, he's not planning anything, and those other guys who may or may not be the people that have to buy it don't have a tenant, so they don't have anything either. So we can't do what Mark's asking them to do a, a build out because we don't know what the use is going to be, and neither do they. So let me just point out that's for the notion that it, that it can't be done is clearly incorrect because it's done all the time throughout the state, and the it I'm referring to is a hypothetical mm -hmm. maximum build-out scenario. It may bear no reasonable relationship to what's ultimately built, yeah. but the way to deal with this <coughs> issue throughout the state, a way to deal with this issue throughout the state, the most secret responsible way to deal with this issue is by everyone's no knowledge, as far as I understand it, I have no direct knowledge of this whatsoever, mm -hmm. we're talking about some limited number of uses on the allowed use list. Yep. So what professional planners do all the time for in situations like this, on behalf of private property owners or private development companies or private companies that are opening or whatever they want to open, is they take a look at that narrowed list of proposed use, or, sorry, of possible uses, and they pick which one is the most intensive development. And they create a hypothetical development scenario based on whatever is the most intensive possible development. Mm -hmm. it, that may or may not be a rational relationship to what is ultimately developed, but it's a worst case scenario from the standpoint of a, potential, a review of potential environmental impacts. What CEQA review is about is review of potential environmental impacts. If the board conducts CEQA review of potential environmental impacts of a quote unquote worst case or maximum build out scenario, whatever result you reach will stand up when whatever is actually proposed comes in because whatever is actually proposed will either be as intense as what you just reviewed or less intense. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, it, it, not to be critical, but it's just not true that it can't be done. It can't be done perhaps in, in with a real depiction of what's actually going to be proposed. Right. That maybe can't be done because of how speculative all this is, but it is flatly incorrect that it can't be done in a hypothetical scenario. That's just not true. It's done all the time. Planners love doing it. <laughs> For is that, is that, that right, Ryan? Oh, you well, love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so based on that, yes, they could look at the uses and you know come up with the worst case scenario, <coughs> and within that sketch plan, just state what the uses would be that they would potentially have and eliminate those uses as well. So there's a large piece of property, 54 acres, and you're going to say, you know, you can develop it to 70 percent, um, you know, 30 percent green space. You would, you know, have a building the size of Wilton Mall, which is not, you know, the worst case would be a ridiculous worst case because that doesn't take into account what's realistic for exit 16. Um, you know, so what I meant to say, sorry, with Mark, is just that Frank doesn't have a plan, so anything would be yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and that, yeah, I, but I, I'm I, not quarreling with that at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I don't, I don't think uh, council is saying you have to show this maximum right. build out, but uh, the, the company that does have the property under option has done these kinds of projects in manufacturing warehousing, distribution, and, and other uses all over the country, they probably have a pretty good idea if they're going to pull the trigger on this option of what they might do. Even though they don't have a specific tenant, the scope, as it was described to me by their representative today, their scope of uh, the variety of projects is relatively narrow. Um, I mean, just to reiterate, our, our town engineer is not, as far as I know, a certified planner, although he sometimes likes to pretend he is. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, can, I can pretend not to. I'll make that, I'll make that same comment about myself as well. Um, but, but, and, I, and I know most of the people in the room, but not everybody, but as far as I know, there are no AICP planners in the room. But planners do this all the time. They're very good at it. They love doing it. And it's not a big deal for a planner to do this. Um, does I pose one more question? Um, does it make sense, given the complexity of what we're talking about, uh, given deference to um, Attorney Ferradino, uh, who requested, you know, leaving uh, um, the matter open um, a little bit longer to maybe deliberate on this for the next thirty days until the next town board meeting, and see if we can come up with a. Uh, you know, a decision-making process and a plan that you know, reached to a reasonable conclusion for both Mr. Perillo, you know, uh, 
the town residents and the prospective yeah. buyer. You looking to me? I'm looking at anybody who wants well, to comment. On it. I just yeah. From yeah. my, yeah. yeah. from my standpoint, is remember that the town board has no obligation to rezone anything, nothing to do with Mr. Perillo or his property. Remember, it's a purely discretionary act. You have no obligation to rezone anything. From my standpoint, which is the narrow legal perspective mm -hmm. of the CEQA review issue, there's nothing. I'm not hearing anything is likely to change. I'm hearing an applicant saying that they can't or won't present a hypothetical plan scenario, and um, I would have had the exact same concern I've expressed. My concern, expression of my concern has, has really nothing to do with what Ms. Ferrandino said, except that it happens to be that I agree with some of it. But as soon as you said that you spoke with the would-be tenant, I thought until today, and this is apparently true, this is all hot off the presses, until today we truly had no idea who we were talking, as I understand it, we truly had no idea who or what we were talking about. Now we do know who, and we have some idea of at least some idea, at least some possibilities of what. So again, uh, this might be foreign language to you know many people here, but planners do this all the time. What's wrong so with that is that, is that Frank has a contract to sell, which may or may not happen like the last one did. He's the owner. He wants to expand the uses just to make it so it's compatible with the property he owns next door. So he, he for him to do this. And, and these other guys <coughs> may or may not, yeah. you know, they, they don't know what industry, they're just looking, right. they're shopping around to see yeah. if somebody wants to be in upstate New York. Well, well let, let's take that scenario then. Let, let's say that there's there, there's no prospective buyer, there's no option. There's no tenant. This is just yeah, but yeah. Here, but let's yeah. say there's, there's, there's no option, you know, option on the property. And it's just a property owner, in this case Frank, coming and saying, hey, you know what, I'd like to have this parcel zone the same as my parcel next door. Under this scenario, if we wanted to limit the number of you know uses, although it might be zone C three, you don't get the thirty different uses in there. You only get you know four or five of them, and build in suitable buffering. Uh, what's the mechanism to do that? I, I mean, I've never seen it done. It's what is in, in the, in the eight years I was on the county planning board, and what you know. say, if we approve a change in the zoning, it no longer comes before this board. Once it becomes C three, it becomes Correct. a planning board Correct. matter, which we then have zero determination. Correct. And I wasn't here in May, and I'll go back to my points in April, with the hesitation. If we had changed the zoning at the property of North Road and Ballard without having known what project was coming in, there would be a transfer station going in. Luckily, we knew ahead of time that that was not the place. We would welcome one into town, but not there. And again, my hesitation with taking a residentially zoned property and turning it into commercial and not knowing what's going in, we are going in blind. And we offered to sign non-disclosure agreements so we could have the conversation with the company or what they thought or with the square footage. We talked about adjusting the residential lot line and the commercial line so that more of that southern acreage stayed um, more green space and wooded. We added the 150 foot buffer, moved access to Ballard Road. The hypothetical situation, I think, would help. Um, but again, after all that transfer station almost going in at Ballard and North, like who in the audience wants a tra transfer station getting off exit 16 when you don't know what is going in on that parcel of land? I, it's a crapshoot. And if we change the zoning, it no longer comes before this board. That decision is no longer ours. They go in front of the planning board with the items listed in C3, and it is theirs to determine. So we don't get to decide if a million square foot Amazon warehouse goes on that property. We don't get to decide if it's an RV storage park or whatever may be in that C3. So, so one answer Aaron, is that we already have 80 acres of C3 next door on the property that Frank already owns and that we're not, you know, that's not before you. But I have a question for Mark. Um, would you be comfortable with 150 buffer that Frank's already agreed he would do to protect the residential neighborhood? Could that be a condition under the secret review as part of this, that that, that be agreed as a condition that be imposed on whatever it might be built here, that there'd be 150 feet under secret? I mean, I'm not generally available to provide legal guidance to applicants. Um, if the board has that same question, I guess I could express an opinion, but I think the applicant has counsel, extremely competent counsel. I think the applicant and his competent counsel should decide to proceed however they decide to proceed. My recommendation to the board would be that you look for some type of hypothetical development scenario. Let me say again, 
planners do this all the time. This is not a six-figure expenditure for the property owner or the would-be applicant. It's, it may not even be a five-figure expenditure. I don't know. I'm not a planner, um, despite what I said earlier. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it, certainly the applicant has the authority, no question, the applicant has the authority to produce some sort of hypothetical plan to you for your review. If the applicant's unwilling to do it, the applicant's unwilling to do it, but you're also not are obligated to act on the zone. And I guess I have a question, Mark, I know Mark Vikings is back there too, or this Mark. That hypothetical situation based on all those acres being C3 with the buffer being brought in, does that help to do the math of what the maximum square footage of build out would be? Yeah. on that parcel sure. so we no, know if it would be one big building the marks, if it could be six buildings the marks have not rehearsed our answer but <laughs> clearly the answer is yes like you said so uh, and that's one of the benefits if a hypothetical plan is if, if take everybody at their word I, I can't imagine that the applicant as counsel are not being sincere in saying that they're willing to have these limitations so if they or somebody produces a plan that doesn't have to show the maximum hypothetical build-out scenario as if there were no buffers, mm -hmm. it could show the maximum hypothetical build-out scenario with these buffers. Or not even the maximum hypothetical build-out scenario, right. but a more likely build-out scenario. And the benefit of that is, then when you do your secret review, you've adopted whatever determination you've adopted, and as long as somebody, <coughs> doesn't matter who, brings forward an application that either mirrors what's been analyzed or is less intensive, no issue. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I was trying to respond to Aaron without asking Mark a direct question, um, which you know, goes against protocol. Um, since Frank is willing to provide a 100 foot buffer, 150 foot buffer, I believe that that would be legal under your secret part of this to condition it that way, so that that would be part of the approval of the rezoning, even though he doesn't have a plan in front of you because he's conceding that. That it would, it would address the how do we protect the residents in the back by providing that large wooden buffer. But there's still the broader issue of all the uses. The various uses. The other thing is, if I'm understanding... And, and, and also issues about ingress, egress. I mean, a lot of this came up in the last 24 hours because the county planning uh, department uh, uh, you know, sent us a, uh, a letter talking about the issues about, you know, a 150 to 200 foot buffer, about the uh, limiting of the number of uses, um, also talked about uh, about traffic that they recommended ingress and egress only off uh, in and off of uh, you know Ballard Road. So you know I'm trying to wrap my head around this over the last 24 hours, trying to figure out okay, you know how do we get all of this done and make sure. In fact, it was a conversation with. Mr. Lapper on the phone this afternoon where he and I both said to each other we want to make sure that we get this right and get it done legally so it's not subject to challenge uh, whether it's challenged by you know a governmental agency the public uh, you know the present owner prospective owner or anybody else I think it's important in that Saratoga County uh, the planning board decision too because it came up in the conversation about um, in public comment with the mall is that um, Syracuse County Planning Board recognized that the application for the town board should be considered in accord with the comprehensive plan while upholding the property owner's right to bring before it a justified request for a change in zoning. It appears principal concerns for the proposed zoning map amendment may center on how the town and the landowner can maintain the rural character of ED Road as well as its mix of residential, low impact, noise, lighting, traffic, commercial type uses. Right. We need to take it all into consideration. Right. I would agree with maybe extending the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Frank, I know you spent a lot of time on this, and John's gotten awful rich on you. <laughs> <laughs> you think we could go another 30 days and we can sit down and answer some of these questions? Thank you.
I mean, if we could just get a generic proposal, of what's going in there, it would really make a lot of decisions a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Frank. I love you to death. I love your businesses and everything, but it's tough to write a blank check. So we'll give you a hypothetical. That's what I said. We can't give you, you know, proposals. Sure. We don't have a proposal. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you a hypothetical. So this hypothetical, just so I'm understanding, this hypothetical concept. I Reasonable call, worst case. Uh, I call them bold diagrams. Not only planners, but landscape architects draw them as well. I mean, and, uh, we have newspaper articles well, reporting on what's going there, but yeah. we don't know. I mean, yeah. other than who, hypothetical. Who made so. the revision about not having an auto repair shop there? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Well, who was it? It wasn't me. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm couldn't I'm if you can do that? I'm looking out for you. Right, but if you could do that, couldn't you also look at that list of C three things and say, yeah, we don't want this, we don't want this. Yeah, we don't want right, this. but, it's, yeah. but yeah. he's not I the one. The problem is, is Frank's not yeah. the one developing the property. Right. He's, he's the one selling it though, but he could make them. So, but right. Kenny, no, 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 then so that's, that's no, the question. My, my question you, is that legal? Was yeah. can you can you legally legal extract those things, things and still call it a C three zone? And if so, John, can you how do we button it up legally? Yeah. And that's that's what. So how would you button it up to not have an auto repair shop there? That's in the contract. Right. That's what we're going to do. Oh, we got three days. For all the additional uses, just put deed restrictions on the property. Uh, that's not really binding because somebody in the future could change the deed restrictions. Right, that's an extremely commendable, yeah. very sincere answer by the applicant's attorney. This wouldn't be a problem yeah. if everyone in the world was bound by deed restrictions because if I understand it, I mean, no one's questioning the good faith of the applicant. The applicant either has offered to or has put in deed restrictions. I have no idea. That, that yeah, that, that yeah. limit the uses, yeah. at least in some respects, the way the town board wants to use is limited. But as Mr. Lapper has very candidly and commendably pointed out, the parties to the deed restriction right. could then change them. Yeah. And then if we see a hypothetical, you know, the gentleman that owns the property across the street that's been in the planning process for a year can also see whether that works. You know, say the Southern, it's a triangular piece of property, am I correct? The way I'm remembering it? Rectangular. Uh, Somewhat rectangular. rectangular. Yep. But say, you know, that Southern part, almost near where your development is, is where the um, the, the acreage, the green acreage stays, and it stays wooded, so it doesn't affect your development. That, those are some of these things that the hypotheticals can help us iron out for the residents that live there, people developing, yeah. <laughs> Beyond beyond just the hundred and fifty foot buffer. Maybe include them in the conversation. Yeah, and have it. Yeah. One of my questions would be, I don't probably postponing this, but if we come back in thirty days or sixty days and the option has expired and there's no option, then it's just here. It would just be, we would be asking for a zone change, and we have you know nothing other than. The request because of the adjacent pieces commercial so i mean they may walk away from it so will it come back in 30 days for a zone change and there's no options in existence where are we what do we do I, I, yeah, even even in the absence of a uh, prospective buyer I still have the same concerns about mm -hmm. you know the adjacency oh, yeah, to a no. rural residential zone. Yeah, no, uh, I, I hear you. Yeah, but deed restrictions are illegal. I mean, I, I've got two or three of them. Wait, are you looking at the wrong layer? What no. He <laughs> <laughs> what he said is a hundred percent accurate. Yeah. yeah. And I agree with Ray. Like not looking at you, you your project. Yeah. The fact that you have an interested buyer is actually kind of what could help it move forward, knowing what they want to do. If you were just coming in with a zone change and we had no idea, buyers. I wouldn't go for it because it's the same thing that almost happened with the transfer station. Yeah, but we got a 150 foot buffer that we're offering. Oh yeah. With no access yep. on the E road. And, and well, hopefully not. That. Hopefully not. We'll but depend on the side. Yeah. yeah. What show me Frank's talking about. The winds are running. What's that down and dark? Every swamp. Seeker's going to look at it. In part one, they have to do a new environmental assessment for in part one. Right. And in part one, they can, they, somebody on their behalf can make some reasonable, reasonable worst case projections. Not the most, you know, not the most intensive possible, but reasonable. And there's no. If a hazardous waste site is allowed on the site, I would not take the position that the applicant needs to study that because it's subject to so much DEC right. and other oversight and permitting that it just isn't going to happen. So we're just going to look at a big box, big box, yeah. open space.
stormwater parking. Yep. We're not going to talk about traffic impacts. We're, we're not going to talk about traffic. About yeah. I mean, you're going to have to count. The applicant's trying to spread. There'll, there'll be some projection and very rough but, numbers. But not a traffic, traffic study. No. Not an engineered traffic study. Yeah. It'll show the 150 foot buffer, yep. what that looks like I think for the people most to see. Extensive use would be a distribution center yeah. for mm -hmm. trucks. So we'll, we'll yeah. use that. We'll show that. We have no idea what these guys might want to build, but we'll show that. The truck entrance, nothing on mm -hmm. the road, the bumper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. absolutely. Okay. All right. Which that truck tra entrance can be placed on the parcel that's already yes. C3. Yeah, it would. It would be. So it wouldn't affect yeah. anything on the zone change. Right. We'll do that. Yeah, that's all yeah. permit. Change. And what yeah. is that about, like the first 100 feet on E Road? -ish? No. I'm not sure. No, the C. Where the C. Three part. Three sets. I think it's about 1,000 feet. Yeah. Oh, it is about yeah, three. maybe a little bit more. 1,200. Well, I was way yeah. off looking at that map. <laughs> You got small feet. I hope it looks like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. One, two, three. Let's hold on. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have it with me. It's parcel. This is the C3. This is the existing one. And, then, um, and this is the R, right? Um, this is the existing oh, that's in our engine, that's the one we're proposing. Okay. So you can just see it's just right there meeting. Yep. Which to me last month looked like it should have been C3 a long time ago. Okay, we got it. We'll get right back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Frank. Frank, thank you. Number six, local <laughs> law number two of the 2022 amendment to open meeting law. Make a motion, pass. What are you looking for, John? A motion? I'll make the motion to approve the local law number two in 2022. Just need a second. Oh, okay. We got John. And he's trying to help Julie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How the hell did we just approve? Oh, the open meeting law. Yeah, okay. Make the motion. I get it. Oh, okay. I'll make the second, Aaron. Yep. yep. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Yes. I think so. Yep, and then they just did. Okay. Six. Thank you. Oh. You guys done? <laughs> <laughs> Frank's passing out his cards out there. You want to, you want to talk on that now, Mark? Uh, I'm sorry? Hmm? Transfer development rates. Yes. Oh, we have yes. passed Amend a, a couple of oh. very, very minor proposed amendments. I would have said them before the public hearing, but I'm pretty sure nobody from the public will care about them. Um, <laughs> they are in section... We're on number six, right? The amendment, the no, open we're on number meeting seven. law. Number seven. We're on the open meeting law. I thought oh, we passed that. that. No, we just passed that. We're on seven. We're just we're on seven. No, we're not. You had to... Did you Rice, you was going to give us on that? Wasn't this? No, on number seven. Transfer development. All right. TDR. Okay. Got a block. We're on seven. Transfer of development rights. Ryan, you want to speak on that? Okay, so uh, we've been looking at this for some time now. Um, we had a couple of people speak regarding the transfer development rights. It is a planning tool to conserve open space in the town, especially uh, select areas that the town wishes to conserve. So we do have a, a parcel in town that is, uh, you know, planned for this. Um, what we can do is, uh, it's a process to go through. They have to submit an application to the town board as part of the town board approval, or planning board approval. So there's several boards involved. There is a, uh, an application to the town in your packet as well. That's uh, part of this. And I believe, you know, we're as part of the procedures, you have to look at, you know, the density that would be allowed on the uh, what we'll call the sending parcel and then the receiving parcel as well. And that's going to be all evaluated by planning board and town board. And uh, it's a good tool to have in town. And I think uh, you can use it moving forward. Is there any questions? Mr. Shepard does have a few minor
minor revisions that you mentioned. Do you want me to tell them now? Yes, sir. Okay, so my proposed revisions are in section Diaz and Dog, subsection one. Again, Diaz and Dog, which is at the bottom of page two. Um, I have two proposed revisions. It starts with upon advice of the town attorney. My title is town council, not town attorney, so I'm suggesting we revise attorney to council. It's spelled C O U N S E L. And then the next two lines underneath that, it says the town board shall accept said document. I'm proposing to change the word shall to may. That's a little tiny, tiny change, but I think it's very important mm -hmm. and reflective of the discussion we had last month. And my last two suggested changes are the very next subsection E as in Edward. And again, it ends with town board and town attorney. I'm proposing to change attorney to council. That's unimportant. Then I'm proposing to add this sentence, which I believe is, again, consistent with what I just recommended and, and with the discussion last month. And the sentence reads, I'll read it quickly, and then if anybody wants to read it, read it, me to read it more slowly to write it, you can, you don't have to. The sentence I'm proposing to add at, it, at the end of subsection E is, whether to approve and accept any proposed land transfer shall be at the sole discretion of the town board. Mm -hmm. Those are my proposed revisions. That little word may and shall costed us enough money. That's exactly right. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion on that? Would I'll make a motion with these recommendations? I make the motion with recommendations. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mark. Proposed local law number three of 2022, Wilton Mall, PUDD. Mr. Jones. I can see, I can see. No, we're good. I'll move. Change the zoning application, in which um, you know, we're trying to take the C1 zoning district, which is the one uh, that uh, governs Wilton Mall and um, even overlay district. Uh, on top of that, we essentially expand um, the uses in the C1 uh, for the mall property only uh, to accommodate Paramount's development, which was uh, at that time just shy of 400 units uh, and remains that way today. Uh, we're here uh, following um, some input which we received from the town board, uh, which is very helpful to us, and um, urging us to consider a engine development district um, for the project. Uh, so I put the bottom here. It's the same project, uh, just a different approach. Um, so we'll be able to speed through uh, some of this uh, for this facility out um, adjacent to the city's properties uh, across the street, the uh, city's service springs. Um, this is um, um, interesting because uh, we normally view these uh, from the uh, uh, frontage, which is just 50, but just to orient everybody out, it takes 40 minutes uh, downtown uh, there and uh, 
BJ is to the right. And you'll see it, some drawings later on in which they're oriented. Uh, so um, that's the 101 plus or minus uh, acres of the uh, Mason's property, which is in the mall. Um, and here uh, is part of the application, um, Appendix B, uh, which is a sketch plan proposed for uh, depicting here the 13 and a half acres, uh, which consists of the property that um, Paramount proposes to buy from Maysridge and to do uh, two things to construct uh, apartment buildings um, on uh, this, the larger switch on the end, and uh, on the right it would be uh, townhouses. Uh, so a residential component added to uh, what is now uh, a one district. And, uh, and then be replaced by a sketch plan taking uh, what you see. And that uh, sketch plan becomes part of the plan to develop the district, uh, a uh, zoning device uh, which has been used on a number of occasions before the town of uh, So, again, that's how it lays out uh, with Dick's and the bond town and the uh, uh, So, what changed? So, the overlay district um, that we proposed two months ago had uh, a multitude of uses in addition to the C1. C1's a pretty expansive district. And um, uh, so we took those and uh, went to uh, on to the building inspector and had a conversation about how we might be able to reduce the number of uh, uses um, essentially by taking the existing uses uh, in the uh, PUDD approach, taking those existing uses uh, and seeing whether they would fit under something that's already in, in your code. And that uh, we worked successfully with Mark in this um, uh, to do that so that um, the PUDD now proposes only uh, two main uses, um, and that is the dwelling and multifamily uh, uses, which I just described, the apartments and the townhouses, and uh, which was uh, part of the previous application two months ago, along with one we just couldn't make fit, so um, uh, we had to define it the educational institutional facilities. Uh, so we've kind of uh, gotten a little skinnier in, in terms of the uses, uh, not because they're not there, but because of some more on the interpretation um, that, uh, that Mark drew for us on March the 18th, taking all of those um, and uh, essentially uh, determining that they already exist, no matter what you call them, they already exist in the community. So we have a skinnier application from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, Importantly, we, we heard last time of the concern over once we adopt this, if we should adopt this, um, how do things change? Do we, the town board members, the five elected officials, uh, lose control over the PUDD uh, at that point? And the particular enemy there was the Zoning Board of Appeals in which um, the property owner could seek a use variance to amend or add a use uh, or a variety of area variances. Uh, so how do we keep that control um, in the town board? And the answer um, uh, to that is um, in your ordinance um, that requires the town board's approval for any changes uh, to a planned unit development district. Um, and it's spelled it out actually there that any uh, variances to an existing PUDD, uh, such as but um, but not limited, such as but not limited to uh, adding other uses shall, the mandatory shall, be made by application to the town board, and again, shall, the mandatory, follow the PUDD approval processes as outlined in the PUDD regulations. So you do maintain the control uh, which was lacking in the, in the previous application. Uh, and then the, uh, the third and most important um, one we considered and then kind of moved us uh, toward the uh, PUDD was the, uh, the copycat. Uh, or concern that in that corridor, if we do it for you all at the mall, we have to do it for the people across the street or down the street, and then all of a sudden we're going to have uh, commercial and mixed-use projects, which is not what our desire is. Uh, we're not desiring um, this to be copied. Uh, so how do we how do we um, handle that? And the answer uh, to that again is uh, the PUDD, which is um, governed by language and governed by a sketch plan. So you're kind of getting to, to, to look under the hood of the car when you see it, and you'll know exactly what you're approving and where, I say exactly, you'll know in sketch plan form um, what, what I showed you a moment ago uh, on the sketch plan, um, and ultimately the planning board goes through and does um, its work on site plan review. Uh, but you'll, you'll you kind of know what you're getting up front as opposed to the more blanket uh, zoning change, which is, um, uh, which is part of the process 
that we started in, uh, two months ago and now have now abandoned. So the um, benefits of the PVD, it really tailors uh, the relief to the project. Um, this one, which uh, I'm showing you here on the Paramount side, and that is um, for that 13 and a half acres, uh, you'll know that you'll be looking at uh, maximums uh, with regard to the apartments, uh, some uh, 284, 286, uh, and 96 on, in terms of the, of the townhouse. You'll know what you're getting up front. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dave Carr. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more, Dave. Great. Great guy. Good luck, Dave. Dave Carr from the LA Group. Um, so the attorney gets 12 slides and the landscape architect gets one. So that's that. <laughs> um, so I just want to talk about really what the project is. Um, as Matt said, um, the mall site is 101 acres. Um, Route 50 here, Loudoun Road here, County Forest here. So the blue is really what we're talking about is what would be new. Bonton would be removed, as we've talked about, and there would be two phases of development. Um, phase one would be a little over eight and a half acres and would comprise um, 296 apartments in four buildings. Um, with underground parking. Um, the interesting thing about phase one is that actually there is a reduction in impervious area. So um, today, this is fully paved. There's some green space, which are, you know, where some street trees are and some green islands. Um, but we would be actually introducing more green space in phase one than currently exists. So um, again, Here's the perimeter road, it's inside the perimeter road, um, and that's phase one, 296 units. Phase two would be 88 additional townhouse style apartment units, and that's located in the area, a lot, most people think it's a drainage area, it's not, it's a borrow pit um, that was utilized um, for the construction of the mall, so Phil would be brought in to develop that. So. Um, phase two is in this area, just under five acres, um, 86, or yeah, 86 townhouses. So um, existing infrastructure, water and sewer um, is on site. Um, a traffic study has been submitted. It was done by DHB. Um, they did traffic counts. They talked to town staff to um, determine which um, intersections were most important, which would be the two on 50 and the one on Loudoun, and it was found that there would be no increase in level of service. I think the PM peak hour um, is um, the most impactful, but again, um, there's no increase in level of service. I know density was a concern for a few of the board members, so we did the density. The PU, your PUD regulation allows a maximum of eight units per acre. We ran through the calculation um, with some um, help from Mark because this is a little different in that it's a developed site. So normally you have an undeveloped site, you remove critical environmental areas such as wetlands and unbuildable areas. What he determined is that the existing buildings would be unbuildable area. So that was removed. We also removed the additional 20% as required by the code for infrastructure, even though the infrastructure is already there. So um, the density actually is 5.6 units per acre over the entire site. And again, as um, Matt stated, this is a maximum of apartments. The, the PUD that we've submitted to you has a maximum of uh, 382 units. We're not proposing any more. We're showing exactly where they will be located. Um, so there is no part of this application that would introduce more um, residential development throughout the site. Um, the green space we are proposing is 25%. Um, and I think that's it. You know, I, when we were when we were sitting in the audience and I heard from a lot of residents, a lot of people talked about um, 
you know, looking out at the wildlife and the trees and what will means to them. And, and I think my only response to that, if, if I would respond to them, is, is this is an already developed area. It's underutilized. It's paved. We're we're really not cutting any trees down to develop this. So it, it, we see it as an opportunity um, um, to. Um, spur um, some development at the mall and I think you know I'll turn back over to Matt and you're going to hear from Research and they can talk about um, um, what what they feel this can do um, for the mall so I'll turn back over to Matt. So uh, two months ago we met Tom Settle from uh, Paramount um, he's back uh, here again you've heard kind of what we're proposing for the 13 and a half acres on Alabama Talk about the larger um, the site and, and uh, the co-applicant is Maysearch and represented by um, Mike Schaefer. And okay. Good. 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 I'm Mike Schaefer, I'm the general manager of Wilton Mall. Tonight I have with me Tommy Farmer, who's the vice president of development for uh, Mesa County Rochester, and Eric Bunyan, who's a senior vice president of leasing out of Rochester, also covering the entire East Coast. So, National Mall Trends. The U.S. retail industry has been experiencing a dramatic change with many well-known, long-established department stores and other national retailers closing and even going out of business, and the Wilton Mall has not been immune to that. This impactful change, which was uh, accelerated by the pandemic, has caused industry leaders to reimagine their retail assets to keep pace with the ever-changing landscape. Our response at Maysearch is the mall recovery really rests on removing the dead wood and reclaiming the now surplus areas with complementary uses. Fountain Town has been closed since 2018. We've had zero interest in it. It's on a very invisible side of the property and is, quite frankly, a, a building that needs to be torn down and the space needs to be used for, for other, other uses. Uh, Mace Rich, our company, has been navigating this retail transition for years, reinvesting in their malls to reposition them into the vibrant and sustainable mixed use center with a strong retail core. We've done that already in some cases. We redeveloped vacancies at the Wilton Mall into non-retail uses. For those of you that know the mall, know that uh, J.C. Penney used to sit on the front side of the mall, and that was redeveloped into the Healthy Living Market and Planet Fitness, and that was done in 2012-13 years. Most recently, uh, Sears closed in 2020, and it's been redeveloped to Saratoga Hospital to take over the entire space, so it's another alternate use uh, for the property where Big Box Retail is not looking for space right now. They're quite frankly they're not out there. The next step to keep the uh, mixed use evolution going would be to incorporate a residential component at the Wilton Mall to creating a true uh, live for play environment. The residential uh, population of the property will help generate interest from other concepts that are key to the successful mixed use development, such as entertainment, hospita hospitality, full service restaurants, microbreweries, and I heard tonight that there was there be some interest in some more athletic uh, uses, indoor training, etc., which could be a possibility there as well. It would also benefit the existing retailers via the added revenue from the residents, who by convenience are a large captive audience, not just for the little mall, but for the entire Route 54. You know, community benefits right now that the, the, the town of benefits from is right now we have a terrific Saratoga County Sheriff's Department partnership. Several years ago, um, the previous town supervisor came to us and wanted to know if we had space available to put the Saratoga County sub substation closer to Interstate 87. We gladly accommodated that request, and while the town did not request it, they do not pay us any revenue to be there. They're at a 10-year term with us, and they exercise their second five-year option. We also train all the canine units in Saratoga County at the mall, in space and throughout, throughout the center uh, on a year-round basis. And we have a uh, partnership with the Saratoga County Sheriff's Department, where if they want to do any training at the mall, we, uh, upon request, we allow that to be done. Most recently, we did special ops training in our uh, currently closed theater. 
Um, we've got a pretty good partnership with Greenfield, make a lot of fire departments. Uh, Wayne, I think you would uh, concur on that. We, we do training at the mall all the time with your teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and we take it on time space. We've done it in, in there. We've done it in the, in the theater. You guys often uh, prep your guys on how, how to pull the trucks out of fire hydrants and then dump the water back on the property. Um, we, we are partners with CDTA, Public Transportation Bus Stop, and the community parking lot, the uh, Northway Express to Albany, mm -hmm. which is used by many workers. Pain Services just up the road from the property, powering the potential of people with disabilities walk around all day with, with their, uh, their team, their uh, constituents. And most recently, we built a connection road between the Mall and Wilton Plaza as part of uh, the build out of. Uh, Sarasota Hospital will make it easier for people to get between plazas. And we continue to support local nonprofits for our grant programs, such as the Christopher Daly Foundation, uh, local food pantry. And probably most of all, you know, some revitalization of the mall will make it more attractive and, and be more uh, tax beneficial to the town, both from the sales tax revenue and the property tax revenue. And the new Welcome by the small Last time, I think there is a natural question of well, what is bringing 
residential units in terms of traffic. How does that really benefit you? The way we think about it is, is merchandising, like we do the inside of the mall. And I know it's called walk malls, but there is an art to it, right? Where you put tenants located in the mall, you put the children next to the women's, right? And, and it all works. So the merchandising here is Bonton is on the back side of the mall. And we have the opportunity to do something creative with it. And we think that the Bonton location is the right opportunity to bring the residential to take advantage of the willingness to make nearly a $100 million investment. And what that does is it dramatically improves our curb repeal. Um, it's been pointed out on the previous slides, we've done a pretty good job on Rail 50, right, with some of these uses that are maybe non-traditional mall healthy living, home goods. I uh, was fortunate, I got the first all the cosmetics deal done in the Calvin region here, I think, because you guys were able to improve the next year's sign for them um, when that time came. But the Route 50 frontage is accounted for, and uh, the issue of the mall, in, whether it's Wilton or elsewhere, that world is contracting. The pool of the prospects is contracting, it's a challenge. So we're trying to open it up. And when you think about Bonton being closed today, and the dead-end corridor leading to Bonton, what our plan proposes is to take advantage of the $100 million investment. Um, we know it's gonna be beautiful. It dramatically improves our curb appeal. It gives us the opportunity to open up the whole side of the mall today that the, it's our back is turned around 50, and then we can take advantage of that traffic flow and start to have these conversations that we're having in many markets elsewhere. We know that the demand is there in the market. We don't have the, the product to present, to deliver. We try, but it, when you make the phone call and you make the pitch, you know, people know what we're all this day, and we haven't given them a reason to consider it. So with this opportunity, with our goal, You know what about me? I heard earlier the gentleman say they like to open the way to the next time. The next time is not going to be in the community. But what I would like people to consider is that the mall isn't going to stay the way it is today. It's already not. You see the, the downward trajectory. So we have an opportunity to make a And we say, where do you think we're going to be? Where do you have to be? So we can do the damage. And I would say, we can do other options. We can do other options.
the Treasure uh, County Planning Board, we have 239, and we close. So that's our, uh, that's our hope. Thank you for listening. Question I have for, for Tom. Um, what goes into the decision making process? Uh, I said the gentleman in the public uh, hearing mentioned about uh, you know condos and co-ops ownership of rental. What goes into the decision making process um, when you go into a project about whether or not to do rental or uh, ownership? Um, over the course of my career, you know, I've, been, I've been involved in for sale projects, mm -hmm. and, but for the last, um, since 1990, it's been all apartments. Mm -hmm. We've never done a kind of conversion of our apartment contract. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, and, I, and I, you know, I'm just feeling this from the, from the lips of a uh, municipality you who know, works it. You know, we'd rather deal with one owner than 296. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got a problem, we come to you. You know, we don't, we don't have to chase the homeowners association or anything to go on. But, so I mean, it's really just my consideration about us to, to do a kind of conversion. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, can, I can give you reasons why not, it's not working. Back before uh, the last discussion, we were a lot of time. You know, it was, it was a um, musical chairs. Mm -hmm. you, you got in on the front end, you did the conversion, you sold out, and you made a lot of money, and you were good. But you got in on the down end, and the music stopped. You had a broken project. You And, you know, rent planters and owners don't mix well. Mm -hmm. Renters are second class, you know, rent, renters are second class citizens. And, in uh, condominiums. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know because when we developed uh, condominiums, we, we kept a few and put them in our, in our, in our uh, property share and our retirement plan and we ran them out and you know, those, those, those tenants, our tenants, were badly by the, you know, some call them condo commandos. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I get it. You know, they have vested interest and uh, the tenants had much, much less. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we have a vested interest. Mm -hmm. You know, we have control, we, you know, we want to control, you know, within our, within our boundaries. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if we don't sell the first unit, we have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is your question? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think Matt at one point used, or maybe it was Dave, uh, you know, used the term renderings. Um, have you prepared any uh, renderings of what these units might look like? We're working on some designs. Um, you know, there are, there are, it really comes down to do you want a traditional look or do you, you know, or do you want to go you know, more uh, contemporary? Mm -hmm. <coughs> seems to be that's that's the trend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could go either way. Um, you know, the, the buildings are what they are. You give you give them a face, a skin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, you've got a conceptual plan, and, and we can dress them up. However, but you know, it's our it's our thought that we're going to do uh, some focus panels and mm -hmm. see what you know, we want to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm doing the math real quick. $100 million divided by 382 units is almost $262,000 a unit. Yeah, and which that's is probably right today. Yeah. I can tell you the construction costs on, on the project. Yeah. I closed it on our uh, construction loan. have got 80% wow. in the last year. And you know that, John. So that $100 million is going to I feel Probably it on a small scale. Yeah. Very <laughs> yeah. What are the price points of the apartments? I know some questions came up with the apartments and whether it be HUD or Section 8 or affordable housing, whether they were $3,500 a month. What are the price points of the apartments? Well, let me say, we do affordable housing. Not as paramount. We have a different community, beneficial communities, and we do um, we do veterans, um, homeless, and we do um, uh, something that 
mentioned, it's elderly, um, affordable, and you do, you know, families affordable as well. Um, and, and this is not that. Um, we're, we're proud of what we do. We do really nice stuff. But what Paramount does is we, we go into markets and sub-markets. We want to we wanna build the best mousetrap in that location. Right, so there, there are some there are some Facebook projects around, and and we always want to, you know, our goal is to build uh, better and be able to uh, rent it for the same amount. It's, it's a competitive thing. You know, we, we can't we can't lose if we can if we can pull that off. Um, you know, some, sometimes I'll say. Um, What's the price per monthly apartment? Is really no, it's fine. So, so in our studio apartment. I heard of 5.6 units an acre. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't understand how that map works out 11 acres. What's it based on? You're buying 11 acres. can happen. Somebody had also mentioned about this transfer of development in this particular project. You know, are you opposed to taking another area of the town? And, uh, I, I just, I don't get the 5.6 units based on 100 million. I think it should be based on the 11 or 15 acres that are being built up. Provided that we allow them that. But the section that we're that brought in front of us is a 13. So we're not talking about 13 acres here. We're talking about 101. Correct. It's the entire mall. It's the only location that residents would ever go in from 101 acres. Well, that's Not without town approval. I mean, facts are important. Like, you can't arbitrarily just like pull stuff out of here. You can sit and we talk about a hundred one acres, that's what it is, and that's where it is. It doesn't happen. 
anywhere else on the top. That's that's just it's real. Two, two more part of this one. Right. So is that part of it? Or are they exempt from it? JC Penny's? So JC Penny's? Uh, DK's? Right, so the point is, but if you, you, you know, if you think along those lines, you're going to say, well, you know, it's it's an FAR of whatever. Well, they own their pad, it's 100% covered, right? And, and so, you know, using that, that density, only applying it to the, the, the footprint that we're developing on doesn't give you a, the full picture. I, I, I understand it. I, I have to pitch this to, to, the, to the people that are coming to my shop asking me questions. Sure. And to pitch it, I'm thinking that we're talking about a 13 acre section of this mall, and now it seems like it, we're talking 101 acres of the mall. If it's and 13, I can understand where you're going But then what does the mall become? A PUD? They just. But, I mean, what stops them all from just kicking everybody out? The answer is, Jeff, it does. 101 acres is the PUD. So it'll be no longer be a mall? Well, no, they're they're going to change, change the mall unless uh, uh, the ASICs comes in with an application for cycling approval and do something else uh, that's permitted. And, and uh, the permitted uses are largely the same. You see one uh, <coughs> uh, well, what they can do on the remaining um, as we were at 87 acres. And we have a sketch plan that has to be complied with. But, but they, could, they could conceivably scrape them all and do those things that it's approved for. Which is another more of the, not another 400 units of. No, because you're not approved that. Do we need a motion required to set public hearing? Supervisor Land. You know, I didn't take a hand count, but uh, most residents were against this, and that's how I felt ever since the beginning, so my vote is no. Deputy Supervisor McEachran. I agree 100%. I heard from enough of uh, enough people tonight, and not counting the people I've heard from in the past six months. So my answer is uh, no. And Councilman Bogardis. Well, according to my notes that I took, it was a pretty even break, no's versus yeses. Um, so I feel it's my due diligence to pass it on to a higher authority for review and to have it come back to us for final approval. So that's a yes. yes. Uh, Councilwoman Culligan. I will agree. I would like to set the public hearing so that we can hear from more people and not just stock the room with people who are on our side or not our side. Um, I think it's important, and to one of the gentlemen's points, to make sure that we get it out into the public, um, not just post it on our website, but find a way to reach out to the residents and get a true feel um, for kind of what we're looking for. Yes, we do. And, um, and I would also suggest referring it to the county and the town cleaning board, because why not? Hmm? Yeah. Actually, it's a three-part motion that we forgot. It's your motion, if I'm not mistaken, was to set the public, public hearing, hearing and to refer to the county plan board and our plan. Sorry, I referred to it as a two-part yeah, I said, I said it's that. Three part. Sierra County. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, Councilman O'Connor. 
Yeah, I think it's important that we get uh, you know feedback from both the county and uh, planning boards, and uh, and also broaden the input that we get from you know the rest of the town residents. So, yeah. Motion carried. And then uh, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint the town board as the lead agency. A second. So just to clarify, yeah, the motion, motion should be to seek lead agency. Because the planning board would have to weigh in on that. And I'm not understanding from the application whether the Department of Transportation is or is not a potential new idea. There will be no permit from the DOT. No so the only the if they would want to be notified, there can be notified the okay. one. So, so it would be a no. Right. So the only involved agencies are our town board and our planning board. And I believe Councilman O'Connor just made a motion to designate for the town board to seek the agency designation permit. Okay. So that would involve notifying the planning board of that desire and having the planning board express it to the one. Um, do we hold Seeker the entire time, or does it can it be sent down to the planning board, who, where the entire board is trained and in, in the Seeker process for site plan review? For site plan review. Yeah. Uh, but I think Council McCulloch is asking, can the CEQA review also be channeled down to the planning board? Is that what you're asking? Lead agency. Right, cannot be. Okay. Well, let, me, let me make sure I'm understanding your question. Let's make sure I'm answering it correctly. The plan, our town planning board could serve as the lead agency, or your board, the town board, could serve as the lead agency. It can't be both, and it can't be one, and then it can't be sequential. One lead agency, either you all as town board, or the planning board. And I guess my question is there are five of us and there are seven of them Correct. who are trained in seeker and in the process of going through the seeker process yeah you make a good point who Aaron. would be I mean, we still control the legislative action of whether or not the BUDD yeah. gets adopted so that doesn't change mm -hmm. but you have a higher level of expertise and, and I sat on the board for number. 10 years I mean everybody that sits on that board is very well aware of of the process and I just yeah. don't know if they would be more equipped to handle that. I'll withdraw my motion if you want to make a motion to I'll make a motion. appoint the planning board. Yes. yes. Or ask the planning board. So ask, you don't get okay. the point. ask the planning board. Agreed. They would like to or under super. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. It would be possible to get uh, to be done with this word rendering. But, um, if for the public hearing, I'd sure like to see what this thing what? might look like. What? Or a couple options. After we went to the planning board with rendering, so we would have something where we want to go. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Do you want to move to August? Um, you want more time? I, I don't know. We don't have to make it tonight? We, we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't okay. have to tonight. So All right. We can get back. And sure. All right. So that's fine. It's if you can move out there once it's given. We can do that. I didn't, we didn't pick out a date. Do you require? I can't remember what I said now. Yeah, I think you, you, you said the right. date. Okay. I was assuming you meant that to London. I don't think you did specify. No, I did not. So my, suggestion, my suggestion is that that's what I'm trying to draw that portion of the motion that's given in the public hearing. So we second it, second it, or somebody second that. And then we do that. That's my suggestion. So withdrawn. What about Julie? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody seconded it, so. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, boy. Somebody going to get the coffee or? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's part of the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Joanna, Joanna Ernst from the World oh. Preservation Board would like to resign her position. Make a motion to accept her resignation. Second. I'll second. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Aaron Armstrong uh, resigned from the uh, Park and Rec uh, Commission. I'll make a motion to accept uh, Ms. Armstrong's uh, resignation. I'll second. Second. No in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Yeah, I'm on they're setting up for 13, John. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. You're almost there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Carol Greenson, she, she wants to resign from the Board of Assessment Review. I have a letter here from her tonight. Make a motion. We accept the resignation. I know it's not on there. Oh, okay. It's 10A. Oh, okay. It's 10A. <laughs> it's 10A. <laughs> 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 Make that motion with regret. Yeah, yes. Carol did really good work. Yes. I saw her in the parking lot before yeah. the meeting. She had a really big smile on her face when she told me that she <laughs> was going to step down after all these years. <laughs> okay, Aaron, and anyone else? Second. Yeah, sure. Me. Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then, uh, Julie, would you make sure all three of them, all three of them are sent? A thank you and all for jobs. Well done. Yes. I have to make a motion request bids for townwide town -wide household, household waste pickup. And uh, I think what we should do is uh, people bring it here as last time and mm -hmm. take Gavin some money. As well. uh, yeah. Gavin as well? Yeah, that's what I think we should do, Gavin. Yeah. So, can I add something to that? So, if people bring it here, we had a household um, bulk waste pickup a couple of years ago. And it came in at like $5,000, which was far below the threshold that would require a bid. The other side of the coin was, should we, instead of doing a you know, drop off over here, should we pick up from the curbside? And it sounds like we're not going to go that way. I if we were to go that way, we yeah. would yeah. definitely need a bid. I okay. thought it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think curbside, the curbs that curbside could be a disaster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> People be and there's quite stuff. a few reasons yeah. why my kid is driving around. So I think we should bring it here. So we may, we, no, my point is that we may not require a bid if we did the drop off. That's my only caveat. That's two places, Gavin Park and Highway. Okay. And we so we don't need a we don't need a bid for a, or we don't need a it, motion for a bid. It may not require a bid. We, get, we, we have make to get a motion for the bid and to, not use it. I don't know. Can we? Okay. Make a motion. Unless the, the office of service is in excess. I'll second that. It's in excess. All favor? $5,000 would require a bid. All favor? Uh, in excess of a certain I think with diesel fuel, it's going to be a little more expensive. I think you're right. right. I think the price of diesel fuel is going to be a little more. It'll be a little bit more, but it will be of level up there. Good. Motion to second. No favor. Aye. Opposed to carry. This meddling and soliciting, I think this uh, COVID is still here, so I'd like to maybe hold it off a while longer. One of the things I wanted to address, because this came up a couple of times in the last couple of months, is organizations or individuals requesting a permit to be able to go up on people's private property to knock on their doors and ring their doorbells to solicit everything from sales to uh, charitable contributions. And well, I'm glad you said that because I'm not in favor of it. Yeah. That's right. You're letting so strangers go on. No, we have but suspended. That doesn't like Girl Scouts, right? No, we have suspended. Their online right? stuff doesn't work for me. I like to make Because I've had two people this week come to my house cool. soliciting. No, I know. Yeah. I see a sign in people's yeah. yards. You have to get out we to scan it. Yeah. Um, well, Ethan Minza. Just like every other thing that we've done this evening, it's somewhat complex according to my uh, homework. Uh, so when I first looked at it, I thought I, I don't. I don't believe that the you know the board or town should have the authority to tell people soliciting you know on behalf of whether it's a charitable organization, right. profitable sales, anything else. Um, 
give people a permit, permission to go on your private property and knock on your door. So my initial reaction was to repeal the peddling and soliciting code. Um, however, in doing so, should we also, you know, or, or just prohibit door-to-door -door solicitation in the town of Wilton? And there have actually been cases of gone to the Supreme Court related to that that have to do with the First Amendment. No permits under it, no permit. So speaking of a step at a time, yes. so we recall our discussion last month, what I said it was something like, you look in the minutes and see what I do, it said, but it was something like the way our local law is set up, you don't have a ton of discretion to deny these things. Right. And I think Councilman O'Connor and I may have talked about these people before that's what happened. So I think if you want to not be in the position of facilitating these things, I think the appealing that would be very important. You can't do it tonight, you have to do it. Right. Okay. But I think that would be a fine idea to at least not be the facilitators mm -hmm. of this. Now, having said that, the activity, that's two of the things. Yeah. The appealing the local law doesn't even have to be the town of 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 the town activity that we will all, we will all think of as soliciting and peddling. I said that mm -hmm. um, of soliciting that soliciting and peddling that we cannot lawfully prohibit. There are a number of protected activities of soliciting and peddling by veterans that we can't prohibit. Mm -hmm. There are a number of other types of aspects that we can't prohibit. So I'm not in a, I'm not in a position as town council to recommend prohibition, but I am comfortable recommending repeal of the local law that right now limits our you know, ability to even deny them. So uh, perhaps I'll make a motion to schedule a public hearing for next month to discuss the repeal of the Town of Wilton peddling and soliciting law. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bold. Gary. Thank you, Ray. Now you're up. <coughs> That'll be at seven. Thank you. Grand Highland Phase 2. Where is this place? Chris Hogan, my name is Scott Massey. We are the Group Saratoga LLC. We're here tonight to ask the board's uh, uh, consideration to uh, their intent to accept open space on uh, Phase 2 of the Grand Highland Project. Grand Highland Project, just to refresh the board's memory, 39 lots, single family residential subdivision in this area. It was approximately uh, 13. Uh, 0 0.01 acres of open space along the Bog Meadow in this area that the board did uh, provide their intent to accept open space. That project is under construction and that open space will be uh, dedicated to the uh, Moving on, we're now into phase two, which is uh, 11 lots on the end of the Grand Highlands project. Associated with that, there's 27.78 acres of open space. Uh, we have been in front of the planning board. We have received such a tool. That's why I'm saying that the uh, planning engineering department as well as the planning board are supporting uh, this as open space for uh, dedication to the town. So we're here tonight to ask uh, the board's uh, intent to accept that open space in advance uh, with the planning board. Uh, just one other quick note, everything uh, associated with the original project and the uh, extension are in accordance with the uh, zoning regulations of the public uh, and the public area and use uh, uh, setbacks, all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I did walk the property today. It's a very nice piece of property. Um, it's high and dry. It's a couple of nice tree stands there. And, uh, Buy him some tick spray next time, would you? <laughs> yeah. A bunch so, of them in the building. Yeah. So this property is continuous to the other town uh, property that there is an intent to accept as well. So I would recommend that the board uh, also set the intent to accept this as well. Make a motion. Make that motion. I, I missed accept. you earlier today because I walked that property too. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you find the two tree stands? Got a second? No. Oh, I'll second. Okay. 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 Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Carry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Set a motion to try and set public hearing for to pro 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 prohibit dumping of stumps on uh, commercial properties. What is this Ryan. Oh. Yes. So yeah, uh, it was brought up that. Uh, Currently, in our zoning code, there's there's prohibition for dumping stumps in residential subdivisions and residential projects. 
So it was suggested that uh, it also include commercial jobs as well, commercial properties. So uh, you see in the highlighted areas, uh, Mark marked up the uh, code to include, you know, stumps on site plan reviews and in timber harvesting and Fort Creek projects as well. So they cannot dump stumps. Nothing be buried. Nothing be buried. Good. We don't have that already. I'm going to get rid of all my stumps. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to schedule a public hearing today. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. All my stuff was carried. 2007. What do you want to do it next month? Oh, really? Okay. Next. okay. Yeah. Set up for next simple. month. <laughs> Request for reduction of fees for solar rooftop target distribution center. Mark. Uh, my name is Dennis Fair. I work at PowerFlex. I'm in Albany, New York. Uh, I'm so we're putting a, a large solar electric system on top of the project roof. The permit for the project is somewhere in the range of $150,000 based on the square footage of it. We're literally putting a rooftop system on top of the building and not building a 500,000 square foot uh, building. There's no seeker, there's no swift, there's, we're not redeveloping the property. All we're doing is putting something on the roof of it. And the metric that's used is by square foot rather than by KW, which many of the other towns will use. KW is how big is the system energy-wise. It basically comes up to a figure that's somewhere between $3,000 and $12,000 everywhere else, whereas you're trying to um, have a fee for $150,000 to do the project. We're not community solar developers. We're not coming in here and using the land um, for, for that purpose. It's being built for Target. Target builds more rooftop solar than any company in the country. Um, we build quite a lot of it. We're based in New York State. Um, so I'd like you to just reconsider that. Um, Didn't we drop that price once? I thought we, that was for the... the that was that for, was for the Ace, roof. the new roof, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now they want to slam some solar panels on it. Oh. It's, it's not a bad activity and it's already approved by the by the town to do it i guess pending that all the permits are in place but that permit is just exorbitant it's just i mean it, you're all of all even the inspections we pay for you know, it's not like you're going to have to do anything there target is very familiar with this where we build these things only we only do on-site corporate projects so it's it's a good project. It's just an exorbitant fee, and we'd like you to reconsider that. So the current fee is one hundred and sixty-nine thousand. Is that what it is? That's got one. Did we get the check for a last fee, the two hundred thousand dollar one? For, for the last. I thought they put a roof on or something. No. They did months. a brand new roof. They did a brand new roof. Was, that one was like two hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars. That was the entire roof system, and you guys reduced that down. How much we reduce it down? Fifty. Fifty percent, I believe. I thought it was four hundred. We cut it in half. I think you took it down to like thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, but yeah, based on grand stuck in my head. Yeah, based on other areas. I mean, what, I, I would be sick if I had to pay two hundred thousand dollars in fees for putting solar system on a roof. Uh, yeah. Our permit system is based on a square footage fee. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's how we have to do it. We can't reduce that. It has to come yeah, to I, 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 yeah, I think that's, I'm with them. But you're okay that, I mean, the reduction we is appropriate. We've five inspections to do on a, on a rooftop solar system like that. So how many, how much money and per what do you guys make, like five bucks an hour? <laughs> yeah. And I'll get two dollars an hour. You guys make it out. So you're <laughs> you're looking to reduce it down to fifteen cups. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to make a motion. I'll second. make a motion to reduce the fee to fifteen thousand dollars. Second. Yeah. Second. Great. Thank you very All much. All in favor. All right. Any opposed? No. Moving. Motion well, carried. How much are my fees? Fifteen thousand. Oh, here we go. Oh. Can I 
Okay. While we're you're here. gonna have to make up for his. He's fees. like he's getting out of here before. <laughs> how much? Are, how much are my fees while we're here? He's, you got to make up his fees. <laughs> I ain't giving you. Never mind. <laughs> All right, that's done. Midnight yet? <sighs> Almost out. No. Uh, Pro's local law number four of 2022 extend two-year term for town clerk and highway superintendent to four years. Does it apply to Mike? I don't. I don't know about this. Um, <laughs> I think it should apply to every position in the town. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion. What are you doing? Two years. When would that take effect? The next election? We have to. It's a pain in the ass. It would have to be a member. Vote on it. Remember, the councilor answer the question. Yeah. The answer is first of all, I hope this is clear in the draft local law that we sent. But while it's up to you to get this ball rolling. This is subject to mandatory referendum, meaning the people of Wilton get right. the vote. Yes. Correct. If you approve the local law, all you've done is approve that a proposition be submitted to the Board of Elections mm -hmm. um, to extend the terms. The, there was some discussion, and there could still be discussion, about extending the term of the town supervisor as well, but the town supervisor um, term can only be extended in a vote taken in one of the town vote years, meaning an odd number year. We're not in an odd number year, we're an even number year. So if you want to proceed to extend the terms of the highway superintendent and town clerk, you can do. You can start that ball rolling now. You'd have to schedule a public hearing on the proposed local law. You'd have to have the public hearing next month at the July meeting, and then submit the proposition to the board of elections by August someday. In right. Late August. Sunday, right. Sunday, in August. Is, right. Sixth. Maybe. It might be the sixth. I thought you said the eighth. Or <coughs> whatever. I'm making right. a motion to set a public hearing. I have second. second. Yep. Absolutely. All in favor? We're keeping you another two years, Mike. Any opposed? If you run again, what you didn't have the if you run again, if you can get them roundabouts cleared out, <laughs> that's how the rest of the year goes. Mike might vote against it. All right, uh, number seven. We got bid approval to for our telephone <laughs> system. Ours is outdated. Maria, you want to speak about it, please? Sure. We received the bid response from Spectrum. They were our only uh, responder. Hmm. Uh, the bid is for $74,160. It is a three-year, well, the course of three years. All right. All right. You're giving things away. Get that target right now. Yeah. Things away. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Uh, it's over the course of three years, so um, after that, those costs that are associated with running the fiber into the building and, and installation, training, hardware, everything like that would be over, and then we would just be left with having to pay the monthly contract for the actual phone usage. Um, so this is just, uh, to, like I said, to install the phone system. The beauty part of this arrangement is that it's fiber, so we can run both phone systems parallel until we're ready to cut the cord on on the old system and we can you know be 110 percent sure that the new system works so uh, it, it's a very good arrangement um, spectrum has all of the capabilities to do soup to nuts so we were very happy about that make a motion we approve the bid from spectrum second oh, second i think we have the second all in favor Aye. any opposed motion carried the rpi not-for-profit we have some uh, requests. Yes. Uh, a couple of months ago, we had set up an allotment initially of $100,000. Um, we are halfway at that point right now. We did receive 10 requests or applications, and uh, each one was for $5,000. So we have $50,000 uh, being requested right now for that offer money. I'd like to see somebody make a motion to get all the bags. It's all good rules. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, application slowly for the two seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 19 vehicle charging station electric vehicles. Maria? Yes. So um, we don't have anything ready to 
go to bid today, but we are anticipating that within the next week or so we'll be able to um, draft up what it is that we need in terms of, you know, um, site location, construction surrounding the charging stations. Um, so I think all we need from the board at this point is the um, uh, permission to go to bid. Uh, what we're thinking about is two dual port charging stations. Um, and if you have any kind of information as to where you'd like them, I think that the park would be ideal. The, the, park the park would be ideal because there's a lot of people visiting the park for various reasons throughout the whole year. Um, the park is large enough to accommodate, you know, mm -hmm. wherever we decide you can put them. Yeah. Um, so what we would have to do is have um, potential vendors come and look to see how they would do it. Uh, maybe do some research before we send the bid out so we know we what to ask for. We certainly don't want to start this until we know exactly what we're doing. Yeah. But do you think it's worth having a dual one here at Tank Hall? Or are we looking I don't at think we got the role. Were we looking into getting no. an electric vehicle? Well, that's the thing. If we, if we yes. wind up getting electrical ve we're electric leave. vehicles for town employees or the highway department, yeah, we will. Yeah, because you know. yeah, like, we were looking into purchasing electric vehicles in town, so we should have one here. Yeah. So town hall and Gavin Park. Yeah. yeah most logical. Yep. Anybody else, I mean, when you look at X15, I mean, those should be privately yeah. done. Are the they universal services. or the uh, specific to make and model? Um, I know Tesla has the one universal? that is specific to their model, but I don't think that's what we would go for. I think we would want one that's universal. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Do you have to look at the location of the Gavin Park or the, uh, the, the building that's next to the uh, parking lot? I don't want to make any decisions with that part of town. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we just have to look at where the power is available. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. One power I was to make is I talked to you about this. I'm involved in another project where we're doing the same thing. Right now there's a program I serve with. I serve mm -hmm. it picked off all the costs. Yeah. So at that time that you're going to be overly exuberant, you wish that name and address. Put in, now is it. So if you think you've got you. a need for the highway garage and over uh, Water Authority, and here at Town Hall, at Gavin Park, do them all. Because they say that we can do all of them. Now it's a reimbursement program, you don't let cash out. National, National Grid has a program too where both NYSERDA and National Grid have contractors that they have like a tier measure program to have. It's not available by certain ways. It's National Grid. <laughs> She's yeah, cringing no, right now. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, I can handle yeah. free. Did someone did we, say uh, free? We, <laughs> so we made a motion to do two. We want one here and one at that um, I, Yeah, I just can't nail down where it got. Markings and problems. Hmm. Well, you don't have to decide on the number. All right, just, just like, going out. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. All right. So we have a motion. And a motion. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. Yeah. No favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Y'all got a flag policy in front of you? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my, own, my, my feeling is the only flag which is, should hang on town property is the American flag that represents everybody. Or the New York State flag or our town flag. You know, I don't think we should have any other flags because if you let one, you got to let them all. We could have a Nazi flag or a Confederate flag. I don't think we need that stuff. Um, can I ask what guy I've ever heard of a militia flag? And and I'm not I'm gonna guess that you know, probably within, within the National Guard or something like that, if they have their flag. But I'd be a little concerned that if there's some self appointed militia mm -hmm. that and, and they create a flag. And there is there is some out there. They're out there. Yep. Well, would this program that though? For? It yeah. says New York State militia flag. So not, not a not a national flag. Well we've got a spot in Wyoming for that flag too. That's where all the service flags are. 
this allows, the proposed policy allows New York State militia. So I, I don't know if that means I don't know what that is. State of New York. Close. They see a red flag the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so that would be prohibited. So Should we cross so off the state militia? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Located in the state of New York, mm. that might be misinterpret what our intent is. Um, I agree with why don't we take that out? Sound good, Councilor? Good. Good. Is that your motion, Brad? You need a motion? Is that absolutely your motion, right? Yeah, here? sure. Uh, second. No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Eight opposed. Motion carried. The one other thing, um, uh, Karen James retired as a town historian. And I'd like to paint the thought to her, Katie Cohen, she's a world president, she's an historical society, she's a real history buff, and I think she'll do a great job as a new town historian. We have a barn over on Dimmick Road, they refurbished to make it look like one of which go. Uh, I was in the I I've seen it. And I know Katie personally, she's a great person. So we're accepting a resignation and No, we accepted that already. They oh. need a motion to appoint Katie. Oh, I'll make a motion to appoint Katie Jones. Second. Second. Twenty-eight in. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's all. <coughs> Aye. Unopposed. Security. Just for some information. Um, anybody got any uh, committee reports for us? Save them. I'd like to thank the Cubs, Cub Scout Pack 4024 for helping us put up flags on the uh, Memorial Day. The uh, historical museum up here opens June 4th this year. We have a strawberry social June 19th from 1 to 4. And Gavin Park Speed Splash Pad opens June 25th. Wilton Wildlife is having a festival this Saturday, June 5th from 11 to 3. That's June 4th? Yes, sir. Sunday, June 5th. Oh, Sunday, oh, June 5th. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Sunday, June 5th. June 4th, the Living Waters Church at 4330 Route 50 is having a food art craft show, homemade items. This is the benefit um, Adopt a Soldier. Okay. That's from 9 to 3. That Saturday, and the other one was Sunday. We sent the speed limit reductions in for Parkers Road up in that area. They sent back, they reduced the speed from the ground, town of Greenfield, town line to Parkers Road from 55 to 45. Speed limit's been reduced from 55 to 45 on Geller Road from 9 to Parkhurst Road. Parkhurst Road, there's no change. And, uh, at least we got something done. So Parkhurst is still 55? Uh, yeah. 45. 45. 45. Okay. Right. Parkhurst, whatever it is. Were we asking for a four-way stop sign at one time also? Yeah, do it. They didn't do it. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's, up, uh, it's up to the county. They won't go up. 
but I'm not gonna give up on it. Maria, would, would you do your controller's report, please? Yes, yes. and can I just quickly mention before I get into the controller's report that we have had a woman, a local woman, Hattie Finch, come I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, come right to um, our town and share a lot of historical information with us. She's a history enthusiast and she has a particular interest in World War II. You might have already seen the different panels out in the town hall. Uh, she gave us up on the side. She's going to have um, what she's dubbing a ribbon cutting, but it's just an event um, on June 14th, which is Flag Day at 2 o'clock. There will be some coffee. Uh, local residents have graciously donated some of their personal artifacts related to World War II. It's very interesting. It's, it's um, it, you know, trying to kind of display what life was like, not only for the active military people during that time, but also for Wilton residents who were here living through the war and how they got along and coped. So I recommend it to everyone. Thank you, Maria. Yes, thank you. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Hattie's expertise, too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Back to business. 2022 budget transfers is our first category on the comptroller's report. We have only two items there, both coming from contingent account contractual expenditures, which is our just-in-case account. So I'm taking money from there to, in the first case, um, fund a cost increase for a vehicle that was already budgeted to purchase. That, of course, with COVID and, and supply shortages came in at slightly over what we budgeted by $1,263.81. And the second item is to cover vehicle repair for the same department for another vehicle. Um, and those are the two items in the budget transfer. Yeah. We want to make a motion for the budget. So move transfers. Second. second. <laughs> um, second. Everybody second to that. Yeah, four seconds. Well, it's there. Well, there. Well, there. No <laughs> opposed. I guess it's carried. Thank like you. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, what I'm looking at right now. Thank you. Cut the rest of the budget and propose. Budget amendments and your glasses. Um, the first five are related to the ARPA funding, and it's uh, just recording the revenue budgetarily and the uh, expenditures budgetarily, so that we can cut the checks to the organization that we already approved in the agenda a few minutes ago. And the sixth item is to increase revenue that we expect an increase in for the Consolidated Highway uh, Aid Program, which is CHIPS, it's known as CHIPS. Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to get some more of that than we already budgeted for. And to give that increase to fund a um, increase in cost of a truck that was already budgeted. Our estimate was mm -hmm. a little low. Uh, then we got the actual um, quote, and it was it was higher. The quote was higher than what we budgeted for in the first place. I'll make a motion to pass budget amendments one through six. Second. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Third category is personnel, and our highway superintendent Mike Monroe would like to fill the vacant MEO position with Chad Flint at the base rate of twenty two forty nine per hour, and Mr. Flint would be available to start in approximately two weeks. I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of uh, Mr. Flint at the base rate of 2249 per hour. Thank you. Uh, Murray, I'm Second. sorry. I never turned I, that over and seen that. That's okay. Uh, no problem. Well, sorry. It's all done. Hi. That's taken care of. That's, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will so it's need not 20A. It's 3B. <laughs> I will need um, a resolution on the next item, which item four is the internal review. I send my audit work papers and um, the board resolution accepting my justice court review to the office of the court administration. So if the board would kindly accept the audit. There were no exceptions. Again, the court ladies, they work phenomenal. They do a great job. I mean, did we Everything skip B? Done. No. no we, we already did that. That's what well, you guys did at 20. I didn't flip this. I, <laughs> I make a motion we uh, accept the internal review on the court. No second. Second. All second. All favor. Aye. Aye. Goals, Gary. Thank you. And the last item is informational only. The service award program um, that was completed and accepted by the board has been posted by the Wilton Emergency Squad for the 30 days. And there were no changes to it. So the next step is we already sent that information to Penflex. Penflex is the service award uh, program administrator. And they're going to build a town as the sponsor for the service award pension. Motion adjourned. Thank you. Second. Oh, Second. Oh, <laughs>